Good evening. Welcome to the Trojan Trent for tonight's Junior Varsity Boys Basketball Game. This time we'd like to introduce our starters and we will begin with their guest, the Rochester Zebras. The number two, Hunter Campbell. Number four, Gavin Young. Number three, Dylan Hill. Number one, Lauren Prater. And now, the starters for your Triton Trojans. Trying to get everything kind of set as Dante Workman takes the alley oop up and in. Andy O'Hare alongside Kenny Barnhart in the Hall of Famer O'Ryan Lumber here for the Tri Trojan Sports Network. So we're trying to get things set up. We're going to call the JV game here tonight. And a foul call on the Trojans. So we're trying to think of things kind of just straighten out before we get to call this one. Yep, I think we're good. As I told Jacob. After Friday night, you know, we will try to call another JV game this season. So Young will bring it up. Caden Large is there to guard him. Now to Prater. He'll work on the right wing, kicking it back up top. Young calls for it back on the left wing, spins. Try one of the travel call, kept his pivot foot planted. Kick out. Three pointer on the way, off the mark there for Bauer. The put backs up and good. Hunter Campbell, the man, putting that one in where now they trail the Trojans. Their first basket's trail by two. Browns and Workman, the first two players to score for the Trojans here tonight. It's Caden Lard work up, works up top. Workman now top to key. Now to Briars in the paint. The big man rolling through, goes up. They're going to call a charge foul. As they say, probably led with his forearm. The Trojan with two team fouls. Yep, so that's Bryles' first foul. Campbell working with it up top. Campbell drives, kicks out, corner three on the way, off the mark of the back iron, no good. Rebound, put backs up. And contested, Rochester won a foul as Bauer went up for that one on the rebound and basket, no good. Workman now at the floor. Spots up for three straight away, can't get the roll, rebound's gonna go to Rochester. No, Triton's there to get it, Bryles up, no good. 
It's fought for. Goes out of bounds, and they're going to say it stays right here with the Trojans. Getting quite a few looks there underneath. Just can't get those uh, shots to seem to drop. Very good. May now works on the right wing. Now to Pitney in the corner. Three-pointer. Catch and shoot on the way. Too strong. And there to get the rebounds, Hunter Campbell. As Dante Workman's going to trail him the whole way up the floor. In the corner to Hook. Hook now will drive against Pitney. Pitney tries to knock it away. Hook loses his dribble. Now finds back down to the corner. Now to Prater. Three-pointer. Puts it in. And the Zebras take the lead by one. Workman out the floor. Goes to Javen May here on the left wing, back on top to Large. Now to Bryles. Bryles now backing down. Goes up strong, a lot of contact, no call. Good call, no call there. As Rochester's Dylan Hook comes away with the rebound. Young with it. Goes in the corner to Campbell. It's it knocked away and it'll stay right here with the Zebras. Hook receives the inbound for Rochester's heel worker. Javen May is going to shadow him. Javen May coming up top, putting some pressure on. Almost thought, almost thought I heard a whistle, but it must have just been a squeak. Campbell in the corner for three. Off the mark, no good. Hook with the rebound. Jacob Pittney trying to knock it away. Hook, nice concentration to keep with it. Three-pointer on the way. Off the mark there from Prater. And Triton gets the rebound. Campbell got a piece of that one as he knocked the pass away from Dante Workman. Hook down the basketball now in the corner to Campbell, kicking it right back out on top to Bauer. His young will feed Hook in the far side corner. Bauer calls for it back. And a travel call as the Zebras will turn it over. And that'll send in the missile, Wayne Reichert. She'll check in for Javen May. The Rochester looked like they're doing pretty good at getting that ball moved across that top of the key and through the free throw line. Just haven't got a look to get toward, turned towards the basket. Large now on top to Riker. Goes to Workman on the left wing. On top to Bryles. Big man's going to try to drive. Goes up strong with it up off the glass. Banks open for Evan Bryles and Triton retakes the lead. Campbell now up the floor. Goes to Young on the left wing. Was going to go right back to Campbell, but Evan Bryles has got a free lane to the basket. He goes up, cruise control up and in. So he's got six of Triton's eight points right now. Now to Campbell. We're working that back and forth. Hook will drive, and we'll get a charge call as Caden Large just had his feet planted. And he'll draw the foul. Or draw the charge, rather. So Rochester, number 12, Dylan Hook, his first, team's first. And that'll send in Drew Bowers and Colton Fervita as they'll check in. Workman now. Comes left, leads it back on top to Pitney. Now to Caden Large on the right wing. Large looking for work on the baseline, but right there to knock it away is Owen Prater up the floor now. Bowers drives, goes up strong with it, up no good. Rebound, Tevin Bryles. Up to Pitney on the right wing, into the corner to Reichert. Back to Pitney. Cross court. Fervent almost got a piece. That one is Workman will drive, picks up his dribble now, goes to Reichert in the corner. Reichert sees a lane, stops, now hands it off to Workman. Minute 10 to go here in the first period. Triton leads by three. Back to Pitney. He'll try a three, contested, off the iron, no good. Evan Bryles elevates, gets the offensive rebound, goes back up strong with it, and he'll draw the foul. What a feeling it might be on, and it is on Dylan Hook, so he got his second foul already here in this first quarter. Has both the Rochester fouls. So Bryles now to the line. First free throw attempt for either team. 
Seven Browse connects on the first one. That'll bring in number 40, Thatcher Samsel. Javen May will check in for Caden Large. So Browse gets reset. In and out, one and two trip for the Trojans on that trip to the fair charity stripe. Inside a minute to go here in the first quarter. Now it's a four-point ball game. Bowers with it. Javen May shadowing him. Good defense up top there. Up and good there for Thatcher Samsel. Nice move under the basket. Yeah, it looks like Triton was really focusing up there on that free throw and uh, top of the key and just it kind of forgot about it under the basket. And somebody just back cut and wide open. Working out top the key. Use that clock and hold for the final shot. Inside 20 seconds to go. Long, Coach Long sends him in motion. Mayo drives, sees a lane, Javen May, strive strong, not there. Fervid will feed it down the floor, off the glass, no good. Campbell's there for the putback at the buzzer, no good. And we're going to send into the second quarter. Triton leads 9-7. to seven. I don't know if you've seen this video, but a team that was basically underhanded was going up a good team. So they got the ball across the half court line and the four of the players just stood there in an arc and blocked out the defenders so that none of the defenders could get the ball but they stood outside so every time the ref started counting all they did was hand the ball off to the next guy but they just had a little horseshoe in the corner so none of the defenders could get to the ball well, hey. without fouling them well hey it works <laughs> hey just just protect that's all you got to do so evidently they burn off like four minutes with just standing there handing the ball off to each other. So Hey, when you don't have a shot clock, you can use as much time <laughs> as you want. They're, they're, as long as you don't get the countdown counted, I mean, you, you can use as much time as you want. Just trying to... So Triton leads here. Playing well in that first quarter, but Rochester not backing down. A tough team. As always. So Workman, Pitney, Riker, May, and Bryles, the five out there for the Trojans. Is that will leave Campbell, Bowers, Ily Oop to Dante yeah. Workman up and in the assist to Jacob Pitney. As I was saying, Bowers out there with Campbell, Fervita, who's got the ball right now here in the corner. Owen Prater and Samsel, the five out there for the Zebras here to start this second quarter. We've been watching that play with Workman and Pitney. They've done a good job. They've, they've, they've timed done, it. They've done that several times, and it seems like it is a quarter break or a timeout break is when they'll just get that set up. They may argue about... Whether or not they want to go forward or backward in time, but hey, they can figure it out to make that one work as a good basket drawing the foul there and then one opportunity coming for Hunter Campbell. And yeah, they got mixed up on the, because he said number 40 and there is no 40 out there. And Caden Large will check in now. So that foul ended up being on Dante Workman, his second. Dante will take a seat with those two fouls. We're going to sit for a couple minutes here. We'll see what Coach Long draws up. It's Hunter Campbell to the line. This is their first trip, and yep. he connects on the end one opportunity. And Pitney now bringing it up the floor. Feeds JV May at the elbow, calling for a right back three-pointer. Can't get that one to go. Wayne Rankin with the rebound. On top, Pitney will try it again straight away. Puts it in, Jacob Pitney. It's his first basket to go, 18 points the other night against LaVille. It goes off the floor, off a of try, and he said went off the foot. As Owen Prater was trying to get some space to open up on the baseline. Looking inbound, taking a while. Finds Fervor to top the key. 
Crater will drive. Leaves it for Bowers. Looking right. Crossing over Pitney. Drives. Hop, step, kick out. Three-pointer from Fervid on the way. Puts it in. And that makes it a one-point ball game following that three-pointer from Fervid up. Yeah, Rochester shoot two of seven behind the arc right now. Triton just one of five. Reichert on top to large. Now to Pitney. Reichert now on the elbow. Rochester trying to take away that post look for Evan Bryles. See what else the Trojans can do as far as scoring. Pitney will try a three inside out. Puts it in. Jacob Pitney answering right back. Back-to-back -back threes for him. Prater on the corner. He'll find a lane to go baseline with the runner. Up off the mark. No good. Jacob Pitney with the rebound. Pitney off the floor. Oh. <laughs> Almost a miscue there. Riker there corralled it. Pitney trying to feed it to Riker down low on the missile up off the glass and good for Wayne Reichel. Riker. Campbell working left. Bowers now goes to Sample. Samsel. Down into Bowers in the low block. Campbell one more pass in the corner. Fervor to hit one a moment ago, and he's going to go kick it that one to go. Tipped around. And Rochester will touch and it'll be over and back. Yep. Is it Bryce Bauer will check in now, or is it Bogger? Bogger. Bogger, my bad. May have topped the key. Now to Bryles down low. He'll drive. Fades away. Too short of the basket. Reichert there with the putback. Can't get it to go. Reichert again with another rebound. Hustle plays for the missile. Large gets caught and finds Pitney. Now to Bryles in the corner. He'll drive it. He'll take off. Puts it on the floor and Triton travels. Uh, IR count. That's a fourth turnover for Triton. And Rochester has five turnovers. There's two steals for the Trojans and one for the Zebras. And with the screen rights, Bowers goes to Young in the corner, but he'll throw it away. They're going to say Triton got a piece of that one. Prater get, gets caught and trapped in the corner. Three guys on him on the baseline. They'll say they get a foul call on the Trojans coming here. So they'll be doing the dollar shot for the two-liter yeah. here at halftime between the JV and varsity, or I guess the JV halftime. Caden Large picks up his first, Triton's fourth team foul. Rochester working around the perimeter. Bogger with it now, drives. Jump ball, stay here with the Zebras. Six point ball game. Triton putting up 10 points here in this quarter. Past the halfway point. Bowers in the corner now to Campbell. Campbell leaves it for Prater. Prater goes left. In the corner to Campbell. Campbell on the way up, and he'll draw the foul and go to the line for two. I guess take your pick on who they're going to call that on. So going to get on Caden Large, his second. So two quick fouls for Large. So Campbell's only uh, free throw attempt earlier. Got it to drop. Has a chance for two here. The first one on the way connects. Luke Malco will check in. So Malco checks in. Number five there. Take his spot on the side of the lane. Hunter Campbell gets ready for his second one. Patient with his free throws and shows off why as he's perfect from yep. the line, three for three tonight. Pitney quickly feeds down to Browse through his hands, and Rochester's there to corral the loose ball. Three-pointer on the way, in and out for Prater. Try and gets the rebound up to Browse quickly. 
Bryles trying to fly through. Wasn't pretty. So foul beyond Rochester, according to the official. So Hunter Campbell has picked up his first, team's third. So Bryles, the only Trojan been at the line, one to two earlier. First one off the mark. This JV group having a hard time with the free throw stripe this year, 51% from the free throw line here this season. Bryles connects, 50% from the line for him yep. tonight. Puts that lead to five inside, three minutes to go here in the second quarter. Campbell crossing it over. Goes to Bowers on the left side. Hop step with the runner off the iron, no good. Tipped around, Javen Mays there to get the rebound. Pitting it out the floor, pushing it up, goes to Bryles. Bryles backing down, skip pass on over to Caden Large. He'll drive, stops on the baseline, kicks it back to Pitney. Pitney skips it on over to May. Javen May for three from the left wing, off the mark, no good. Didn't quite catch the rim as Prater gets the rebound for the Zebras. Maybe May got a piece of that one. Javi May playing some nice defense up top here in the key. Uh, top of the key here. Pitney on the right wing. Campbell goes to Bogger. In the corner now. Prater will drive. Nice feed down to Bowers. Now goes to Campbell for three-pointer. Up on, up and good. Cuts the lead to two. He's leading all scores with ten right now. Campbell reads that one and knocks away as Triton turns it over. Bowers at the floor, wanted to go down to Malco, but didn't see it. Now goes to him in the corner for the lead, puts it in. And the Zebras back out in front. 14 points put up here in the quarter. And a timeout for Coach Long and the Trojans. Yep, a little bit of momentum shift here, so try to, try to get that stopped here. Sometimes that going into the locker room, then come back out and just keep on going, so try to get uh, Kind of rode on the Rochester side and get regrouped. And so like I said, sorry we get things going quite right off the bat. Was he was trying to get some things kind of squared away, yeah, yeah. and I told Jacob and Dante that with some of these home games the rest of the way. We got three of them left. I said we'll try to call these final three home yeah. games. So yeah, we got to this one tonight. Post Argus on Thursday. Mm, I'm going to say that could be doubtful, depending on weather. Yeah, if it's supposed to do what they're saying it's going to do. I mean, we we may not have that game on Thursday. Yep. And then on Friday we will be down to Tippy Valley, be able to broadcast down there. Mm -hmm. And then if that Argus game does get canceled, we're not sure if it's possible to get possibly a Saturday. If not, may not be made up. But the next week we'll be up at Bremen on Tuesday, and then following up on next Friday, the last. Regular season game with Knox back here at the trench. Then sectionals. Yeah. Well, we don't have to travel for those no, this year. To, so, hey. Don't have to travel. A whopping two minutes but, or some. <laughs> for others, about five. Yeah, maybe about ten. Depending on the roads. And if Orion sleeps in, you never know when he's going to get here. <laughs> I can say it because he doesn't have a headset on yet. So, Pitney goes to work. See what Coach Long draws up out of the timeout. Trying to focus them back as Rochester leads here by one. Now to Pitney on the right wing. He'll work up top. Goes to Bryles. Bryles sees a lane. Big man's going to roll through. Kick out to Riker. Three-pointer on the way off the kick out. No good. And Prater fights and comes away with the rebound. Bowers with on the left wing. Back to Prater. Up fake. He'll go baseline. Sees an open lane. Bank is open. And Rochester takes the lead up by three now. 42 seconds to go here in the second quarter. And Pitney will wait patient. Think about this upcoming play. Campbell's going to initiate some play here. Apply some pressure. There goes the countdown. On top to May. Down to Bryles in the paint. Bryles goes up. Might have go with the travel call there as it'll get knocked out of bounds by, Reich, by Rochester with 5.7 to go.
In the corner to May, he'll drive. Goes the runner, can't get in the put back up. Browse's put back's no good. And that'll do it for the first half. Rochester takes the lead there in that second quarter to take a three-point lead into halftime. Yeah, the, as far as uh, quarter scoring here, it was 9-7 to seven, Trojans at the end of the first. And then uh, that second quarter, uh, 16 points put up by Zebras where uh, Trojans had just put up 11. So we get the stats here so synced across. It was a 10-0 run. Yeah. Or, or I believe a 10-0 run or a 10-1 run. As so they caught fire there. Yeah, Trojans there just 2 of 4. Free throw line, Rochester perfect to all three. Two-pointers, 6 of 14. Rochester 4 of 10. Behind the arc, just two drop for, of the eight for the Trojans were 4 of 11. And 6 to 5 on the turnovers. For Zebra scoring, Campbell with 10. Prater with 5. Malco and Fervina each with 3. And Samsel with 2. For the Trojans, Bryles with 8. Brittany with six, Workman with four, and Reichert with two. So we'll take a break. We'll be back here after halftime right here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Andrew here alongside Kenny Barnhart in the Hall of Fame. We're Ryan Lemmer here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network. As Anna will join us, I believe, in the varsity matchup as Triton leads here 20 or trails here 23 to 20 as Rochester going on that 10 1 run to that final push there of the second quarter to find themselves back out in front. Had three lead changes in that first half. Largest lead was the Trojans with six points at one point, and 19 to 13 was that differential. So Workman back on the floor with those two fouls. So feed it to Bryles in the paint. Knocked away by Rochester's. They'll take off. Campbell now. Bryles <laughs> runs it down and says, I don't think this is going to be an easy layup. He'll knock it away. That's fine. You can reset your half-court offense. So both teams that are starting fives out there. Javen May, Caden Large, Pitney, Bryles, Workman. Three-pointer on the way in and out for Young. Rebound. Goes to hook, putbacks no good. And Pitney now brings it up the floor. Directing Workman. Goes back on top to him. Rochester doing a good job to jump those passing lanes here in that first half. Now to Workman on the right wing. Bryles calling for it, but Pitney cuts the basket. Throw pass on a little bit behind him. As Prater will just say a push on the Trojans out of bounds. So Caden Large is going to pick up his third. So Wayne Riker had himself quite a first half. Two points, but those couple rebounds he picked up are a couple really big offensive rebounds for the Trojans. Campbell goes up and through traffic, gets that one to go. And the Zebra strike first coming out here in half, come out of halftime. Pitney to answer back to cut the lead. Puts it in and cuts it to two. Gets him up to nine points. Three-pointer goes for Bogger. And he'll go to the line for the rare four-point play. This was a two-point basket. Okay. So now the officials and the coach are going to have a quick word. It's kind of where I couldn't quite see the corner enough. Boggers and one opportunity drops. And Rochester continues perfection from the line. Bryles stops, high pass to Javen May, and Triton throws it away again. Young on the fast break, up and can't get it to go. Javen May fighting for it with a foul call on the Trojans. So Javen May is going to pick up his first team's third this half. Boggered inbound. Campbell up top. Goes to Young, feeds it through. Pitney's there to deflect it. And it'll stay right here with the Zebras. Coach Kelly calling out his offensive inbound set. Prater scanning the floor, finds Campbell up top. Now goes to Young. Leaves it for Prater. Bogger hit that two a moment ago. We're going to get a foul underneath. Off the ball. So Young's going to pick up his first foul. Zebra's first this half. So Workman now will go back to work, works with the screen right. Back to May, in the corner to Pitney, three-pointer on the way, can't get that one to go. Dante Workman fights for it, but Young comes away with it. And now the Zebras have numbers, but we'll get a foul on the fast break. So Wayne Reichert's gonna pick up his first, team's fourth. 
Trying, continues to try to get things figured out. It's Prater scanning the floor, trying to find somewhere. Goes to Young. Now to Prater on the left wing. To Hook. Trying to feed back door, but miscommunication by the Zebras, and Triton comes away with it. Pitney skip past to Dante Workman. Out of Bryles, corner jumper on the way. Off the mark, no good from the baseline as Workman goes to the floor, but I think we're going to jump ball call, and it goes to the Rochester. Triton's offense stumbling here in this since about the second quarter, about halfway through. Yeah, they're just three points so far this since halftime. The Rochester kudos to them as they've battled hard. That 10 to 1 run has put them out in front. They're playing well with that five point lead. Trying looking for a stop. And Workman trying to knock away. Coach Kelly wanting a foul call as Bogger works with it. Goes to Hook. Tie defense by the Trojans. A lot of contact, wow. and then that one's going to get it. So Bryles is going to pick up his third. Triton's fifth. And the Trojans fans not happy with that call. So Large and Bryles each with three. Ben McFarlane will check in. Next dead ball. Pitney there to knock it away, but Campbell corrals it. And they're going to say a push off. Coach Long kind of getting after his guys. He had quit pushing, get your hands up. That's where the Trojans are kind of beating themselves here. Is there one foul away from putting Rod, or I guess they are there to put him. So Pitney's picked up his first, Triton six. So one more, and Rochester gets to shoot bonus for the rest of this game. Look with the screen left, now in the corner to Bogger. Bogger drives, picks up his dribble, goes to Young. Young the dribble drive. Leaves it out, but Javen Mays there to corral the loose ball. Up the floor to Workman, streaking up, up, and in. Dante Workman, the assist from Jacob Pitney. Three-point ball game. Campbell works top to key in the corner out of Young. Three-pointer on the way, off the mark. Hits the top of the rim. The Trojans will benefit from the ball going up over the basket. Now, so then Drew Bowers. Your comp tickets for the Hall of Fame. Workman now on top to May. Now goes to Pitney. To Riker here on the near side. Now to May. Workman calling for in the post. Or in the high post, jumper on the way, off the iron, no good. Hook gets the rebound for the Zebras. Empty trip for the Trojans. Up the floor now to Campbell. To Bogger, top of the key. Bogger crossing it over, he'll drive, goes up strong with it. It can't get that one to go off the front of the iron. Knocked away, and they'll say one out of bounds on Rochester. Working out the floor. Goes to McFarland, top the key. Trying trailing by three with two and a half to go here in this third quarter. To McFarland to tie. Can't get that one to go. Rebound tipped away by Javen Mann. A foul call on the rebound. As the fouls continue to pile up for the Trojans. So Javen May is going to pick up his second. So that puts Rochester in the bonus. So Rochester will shoot the bonus the rest of the way out here this evening. With them being perfect at the line, that could be a get a lot of foul, a lot of points racked up here on the free throw. Drew Bowers to the line for the one and one opportunity. The shots up on the way and rattles in. Rochester's been practicing five of five from the line here tonight. And that'll send in Luke Malco, number five, as Bogger will get a break. 
Of course, we'll have the varsity game following in this one on the same stream. Bowers' second free throw drops, and perfection continues for the Zebras from the free throw line. Five-point ball game, 2.20 to go in the third quarter. Workman in the corner to McFarland. Back to Reichert. Now to May. Workman calling for in the corner. Beating it down to Reichert. Up fake. Nice play by Wayne Reichert. The missile guiding his way in for that one. Uh, the good uh, ball fake there and get the defender in the air and just went around him. And Prater trying to draw the foul. Gets his own rebound. Goes back with it. Triton gets the rebound there. Kelly wanting a call. Now to Workman on the right side. Goes to, Mc, goes to McFarland here on the near side. Back to Riker. Pitney wants on the baseline. Riker wisely pulls away. It's Rochester playing well with that zone defense. They've got thrown out there trying to take away the post, but Evan Bryles on the bench with Caden Large, those three fouls. To Workman in the corner. Trying to thread the needle. Rikers, they're going to have to fight for it. Now to Pitney, goes back to Workman. McFarland wants in the corner, but he'll switch to the far side corner. It's Rochester's zone defense. Very potent here in this third quarter as they lead by three. Down to Workman. Hook sends it back. Javen May goes to the line for two following that drawn foul there. So Malco is going to pick up his first, team second. So see if Javen can get the Trojans right to dump ship on the free throws. Like I said, the free throws have been tough for these guys here this year. Just, just, just a percent north of 50%. Oh, we've got... Uh, oh, we got blood on, on Prater's knee. Yep. That'll send Fervita in. So he gets that, gets some attention there. I'm going to get a timeout, or officials timeout as they clean up to clean the floor up here. Of course, Friday night, it was good to have Trent back in the, images yep. by Trent back in the building. Saw yep. those pictures today, looked very nice. Yep, he come back and get got some of those taken care of. So for some of the seniors, they wanted some. He actually even come back up uh, Saturday evening and uh, got Ashton Oviedo, took a bunch of pictures with him for, for his, some of his senior pictures. So. And it's always neat to hear the stories he has from down oh, south yes. at IU. I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to my tour <laughs> next year. I'm, I'm looking forward to letting get this freshman year figured out. I'll get my tour next year. Yeah, he's. we was down there one of the games, and he took us down under an assembly hall and all the uh, tunnels. And there he goes, you can get lost down here. And sure enough, yeah, there's a. they go here, there, and everywhere. I'll so. tell you, one of these days when I make that, or Ryan are going to make that trip. Well, I'd like to see that Friday night football game. However, <laughs> we have other responsibilities. But yeah, it's been uh, kind of interesting for some of the stuff they've been doing with the recruits coming in and certain ears of corn and everything else. Yep, you never know. Yep. So as they scan the floor to make sure all the blood is cleaned up. So is this one we need the white? floor so we can just scan it and see. Well, better yet, just install black lights and just flip it on. It's, it, it's, just, it's just like trailing deer blood when you're out in the out hunting. You know, you use those little blue lights so get, get you a blood flashlight, turn off the lights and see what you can find, and there you go. Have it done and over with. No, there's enough people around here that hunt bourbon. I think we can probably call somebody. I'm sure somebody's got one. I'm sure Coach Eunice has one. Probably. I'm, I'm just saying. I bet he does. Empty trip for Javen May. So Hook comes away with the rebound up to Malco. Malco will drive, kicks back to Hook. In the corner now to Campbell. Campbell fitting down to Hook, but a foul call under the basket on the Trojans. And the fouls continue to pile up. So May picked up his third, so the third Trojan with three fouls. Him and uh, Large and Bryles. And a shot for Hook. Looking to stay perfect. And can't get the bounce of the first missed free throw. 
Ferbera goes now to back to Hook, who goes up. He'll go up to that one and gets the friendly roll. Leads back to five. Triton just needs to be efficient here in this possession. Try to chip away and a timeout for Coach Long as he's going to draw something up and quick word with these guys for 25 seconds to go here in this third quarter. And they have finally got a little bit even scoring in that third. Uh, Roger still out, has outscored the Trojans 9-7. to seven. But with the fouls piling up, putting Evan Bryles and Caden Large kind of to the bench, a couple of key players. Yep. Yep. It's kind of hurt the Trojans here tonight. Yep, let them get back in here at this fourth quarter and hopefully they can get through that fourth quarter without picking up their fifth foul. So at least one to give. And as far as you go, as, I mean, as far as their con contributions, you know, Bryles averaging double digits and points per game and Caden Large about three, but he does a lot of other things that you don't yep. quite see in that stat book. You know, unfortunately, we're down Workman, who averages about eight points a game here this season. But this is a good, this is a good young group. Mm -hmm. This the future is bright for these Trojans. These guys here are playing extremely well this season. And there'll be a big hole to fill with all the seniors that's graduating on the varsity. Ah, there's only five or six of them. <laughs> be. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure. And, a lot, and the <laughs> thing is, a lot of those we've called varsity most of their careers. Pretty much uh, every, all of them, all, all their entire careers. Hook jumps in front. He'll take off down the floor, skipping around, goes up. They're going to get working with the body. As he had his hands away. As the Trojan fans unhappy. So fourth Trojan with the third foul with Workman. Picking up that foul. Wasn't much Workman could really do there. Got stepped away, was falling away, had his hands up in the air. But then again, you know, that was a different angle we were seeing in the from. Second missed free throw for the Zebras here tonight. Hooks empty trip from the line as Evan Bryles boxing out, and that'll do it for the third quarter. Rochester still with that lead, leading by five going into the fourth. Right, and a lot of things to talk about. I think, I mean, right now, you know, the fouls aren't quite going your way. You got to be smart with the defensive side. I mean, you know, you want to start disguising things to kind of want them to come, assume they're going to get pressure and get bumped and yeah. just keep yourself distance, make them think that and try to draw yourself away. This will be a big growing moment for these Trojans here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, the biggest thing is, they say, just keeping it so you don't, don't pick up a foul that's unnecessary and don't let a and one opportunity be one of your fouls. But uh, shoot, two point shooting, you know, pretty even. Trojans shooting eight to 18 at 44 percent. Rochester shooting seven to 17 at 41 percent. Um, behind the arc, three of 11 and four of 14. But the big thing there, like I said, the free throws, striking just two of six, where Rochester been able to hit six of nine. It's Coach Long using every second of that in that quarter break. So Riker, Workman, Pitney, Bryles, and Caden Large, the five with Fervita, Hook, Bogger, Campbell, and Bowers, the five. Riker for three, he drills it. Gets the missile coming up big. Gets him up to seven points. So trying right out of the gate. Cuts the lead to two. Pitney communicating, drawing, directing his defense. Riker trying to get through the screen. Down to Bogger. Bogger shot no good. Bryles with the rebound. You know, trying as a team cleaning the glass. These guys here doing a great job this season. Now to Riker for the tie. Can't get that one to go. Riker get the rebound. Goes right back up with it. Get that foot planted. Wayne Riker five points here in this fourth quarter. Ties it up at 32. You know, that's one of those players, you know, he does a lot of defensive stuff. And, uh, Probably not draws a lot of attention to him. So now they Rochester probably just held back a little bit. And uh, 
So now he's been able to step it up. And a foul call, and the Trojans Bogger will go to the line for two. So, yeah, Bryles going to pick up his fourth. But the other side of it is that's the 10th team foul for Triton. So now Rochester for this whole fourth quarter gets this double bonus. The team that started off the game six of six. It's missed their last three free throws. Make that four. As Prater will check in and Javen May will check in, take Evan Bryles spot. He's going to sit with those four fouls until Taylor Long needs him in the final push. Bogger to go again. One of two today. It was perfect on an and one opportunity earlier in the game. In and out as, like I said, they started off perfect, miss, missing their last five free throws as the Zebras are not of the Trojans here in this final push here in this fourth quarter. Working on the right wing on top to me. Goes to Riker, top to key. Not a workman. Trying patient with the basketball here. Now to Pitney. And finds Wayne Reichert underneath. Wayne Reichert, the missile. 11 points. The missile creating a lot of noise here in this fourth quarter. Seven points. All him here in this fourth quarter. Prater with the run on the baseline. Tipped by Campbell. Wayne Reichert there again. The missile guiding his way for another rebound. Workman now patient as Campbell is going to come to him. Workman now patient. Now goes to Pitney. Three-pointer for Pitney. Off the iron, no good. Fighting, fighting for the rebound, knocked away by Campbell, but there's Javen May to take it away. Now to Workman. Now to May here on the near side. On top to Pitney, quickly down to Workman on the base, on the paint, no good off the mark. Hook gets the rebound for those Zebras. Speeding up the floor, goes to Campbell. Campbell drives, goes up strong off the glass and ties it back up at 34. That basket gets Campbell up to 14 points, leading all scorers. Next one would be Reichert with 11 for the Trojans. Seven of his 11 points coming in this fourth quarter alone. Javi May kick out. Pitney for three for the lead. Can't get that one to go. Rebound goes to Prater. Up to Bogger. On to Campbell on the right wing. Three-pointer for him for the lead. Can't get that one to go. Javon May trying to box out a hook. Knocked away. Dante Workman. It's fight for the basketball. They're going to say a foul call on the Zebras, I believe. So number 12, Dylan Hook, is going to pick up his third. So Rochester's only their third team foul. Hook not happy with that call. Oh, broke the images by Trent Rule. Got to stay. You can't be underneath the basket. You got to be off to the side. Yep, just got to be outside the, the uh, lane there. It's Workman now gets things reset. Goes to May on top to Pitney. Now to Lars to Workman on the left wing. There's Reichert. And a Reichert again. Wayne Reichert <laughs> having himself a fourth quarter as he has just exploded. Yep. Like I say, he's one of them that's probably just been under the radar most of the game, and now all of a sudden starting to feed him, and he's just getting those to drop. This season high here tonight. Hook him top to key. Driving against May. Long winning a travel call. Tipped around. Javon May's there to get the rebound. Goes to Pitney. Up to Workman. Workman takes off. To Caden Large on the baseline, back to Pitney by himself. He'll go with the up fake. He'll drive. Runner on the baseline, short of the mark. Javon Mays there for the putback, blocked by Hook. And a foul call, foul call underneath on the Zebras, I believe. Wait. Rochester unhappy with that call. So Bogger's going to pick up his first, team's fourth. 
This one goes to Riker. <laughs> Riker back up off the mark. Caden Large puts it right back up, but he gets shoved to the ground. No call. Hook now on the transition. Goes to Bowers. Blocked oh. by Pitney. Sends it back. Had to cut her on the ground. Those long arms and that extension by Pitney. He timed that just perfect and get all ball and not worry about hitting the shooter. Nice play there by Jacob Pitney. Powers with it on the left wing, crossing it over, hop step. Nowhere to go. Finds hook, top of the key. Leads away. Workman trying to knock it away and does, but it'll stay right here. Good effort by the Trojans. Leading by two with 2.23 left to go in the ballgame. And the Trojans, of course, 10 team fouls. So any foul sends the Zebras to the line for a double bonus. Got to play smart here. Drive for Campbell, ties it up at 36. Workman now scanning the floor. And then Bryles looks to check in past the two minute mark. Torkman in the corner. Oh. Feeds it to Riker down low. Riker with the runner too strong. Bog Bogger elevates, but Riker rips it away. The <laughs> missile making a whole bunch of noise here in this fourth quarter. He's got 15, yep. and Muscle's coming here in that fourth quarter. I think all 11 points have been him in this quarter. Yes, it has been. Hook for three, takes the lead. Back and forth we go inside a minute, minute 40 to go. Wayne Reichert, have yourself a quarter and a timeout for Coach Long. You know, if Riker grows up, if he, if he, if he, <laughs> not, not grows up, but once he gets older, he kind of reminds me just a little bit of a John Gardner, just a little bit. Yeah. Because John was, wasn't that big when he was a freshman. No. But we saw what he grew to be. And you know, you kind of looking down there at Wayne, and you know, he, you never know. Yeah, we've always, John was always the only one of those that you've seen as you're growing up, you know, he was always the point guard. Yep. And then here, senior year, you're the big man underneath. Well, maybe you never know. Maybe Coach Long <laughs> envisions the same thing I'm seeing with Rain, Wayne Riker down there as a possible another John Gardner down the road. So the Trojans having themselves a fourth quarter, 11 points coming from the hands of Wayne Riker with a game high, 50, or excuse me, team high 15 points. Where Hunter Campbell's leading Rochester with 16. Triton has outscored Zebras 11 to seven in this final stanza. So Riker playing well, coming into this game, trying to find it here. Putting, only put up 53 points, averaging just over, just under four points a game. Boy, he's got his season high right here with 15. And his big game was the opening, yes. the opening uh, yeah. of the season. Although he got the missile nickname during football during, <laughs> during the preseason for that one. Down to Bryles, big man, rolling underneath for the lead. Can't get the roll. Prater gets in there and finds his way through traffic to get the rebound. Final minute nearing here. Bogger on the left wing with a one-point lead. Book crossing back. Goes to Prater. Finding Bowers. Back to Bogger. He'll drive. Riker trying to get there, but they're going to get a foul call. As Torch is trying to get their hand on the ball. So Riker's going to pick up his second. And Riker trying to just, just kind of make him hesitate and trying to yep. make force a travel. And Bogger was empty on that last trip. He just won a three tonight. Team that started off six of six from the line to start the ball game. Gets that free throw lid to lift. Chance to extend the lead to three with 58 seconds to go. Bogger to go again. Shots up. Puts it up, lead up to three now for the Zebras. As they've, came, they've stayed in the ball game. Fighting their way back to the top. Workman goes to Caden Lars. Down to Bryles. Big man trying to go up strong. They're going to get a charge call. Yeah, and that right, if that's for Bryles, that's it. Yep, fifth foul, going to leave the game with eight points. Now Bryles done for the night, but I think right there was a good job by Rochester to see the 
you know, the strength of him underneath, and you knew he yep. was going to drive hard. And for them to sit yep. there, plant, and draw that, and draw that charge, that that's a big that's yep. a big move for them. Just camp right there and just block it to where you'd have to shove him out of the road. Pitney takes it away. Now to Workman. Triton's got to play patient here. Yes, you're down by three. Pitney for the tie. Off the iron, no good. Caden Large rebound. Back to Pitney. Two-pointer. Puts it in. One-point ball game. Coach Long firing his team up. Triton a team on the season and averaging 16 points a game off turnovers. Averaging about eight steals a game. Yeah, we got them down uh, five steals. Rochester having six steals. Rebounds there. It was fairly even now. The Tritons there with all those putbacks there. Got it up to 28 rebounds. Rochester running to get to 22. And the Trojans just need to communicate, be smart here on defense. So No fouls, I think, is kind of the thing I'd be careful. I wouldn't yep. be trying to foul anybody. Yep. And the other thing is they Triton just still has one timeout left where Rochester has not taken a timeout. So we'll see what the great Taylor Long draws up here. Yeah, just be smart. Don't do an unnecessarily foul. So Prater, Campbell, Bowers, Bogger, and Hook. Javen May, Workman, Pitney, Large, and Reichert, the five out there for the Zebras, and a foul call on Caden Large, I believe. Yep, and that's going to be his fourth. So Bowers goes to the line. Perfect on his trip here earlier in the game. Wait. 15? See, yep. that is it. Yep. Yep. I say they should have got Dylan Hook. He wasn't doing very good at all. Bowers in and out. Triton still a chance. Trailing by one with 22.8 to go. Bowers trying to extend that lead. Has the band getting in position for, to, for tonight's game? Bowers puts him up by two and a full timeout. For Rochester. For so. Rochester, I believe, was waiting on the final signal. And yep. there we go. We had to go all the way to midcourt for that one. Yep. So get there, use their up one of their first ones. So their biggest thing is, is just uh, probably let Triton get the ball in bounce, but try to make them inbound it here under the basket so they have to go to full court. And just don't foul. You know, and I, and I go back, and I know I say this all the time, and Taylor knows this, but watching him play in high school was awesome to watch. But watching him coach, same exact energy. You know, he's down there, and, you know, it's, it's a tough spot. He's down there trying to make the guys laugh yep. and have fun. He goes, hey, this is funny. He's he's yep. joking with them in, in the huddle. I love that. I, lo I love Kate, Coach Long's coaching style. Yep. And sometimes your point gets a, across a lot better when it's not under extreme pressure. Just cut the tension and say, hey, here we go. Yep. We're all right. Down two. And he could be, hey, you remember such and such that when we did that play, and let's just tweak it and go. Now let's see what they go. Wayne Riker goes to inbound. He has the full baseline to patrol it. Let's see if we uh, have anybody cutting, taking off. Orphan trying to get freed up, finds the far side corner. 20 seconds to go. Goes to Pitney. Pitney with the basketball. Hands off to Large. Now to May. May goes to Workman. Workman to Pitney. Pitney with the up fake. Drives. Picks up his dribble. Now to May. Now to Reichert. Five seconds. And a timeout yep. for Coach Long. That'll be his final timeout with 4.4 to go. I think he's seen something bust. Didn't quite materialize like he wanted. I think they were kind of hoping for Pitney here in this yeah. corner. And they just, Rochester with a good defense, took that three-pointer away. As the varsity boys ready to get going here. They want to come out and see a good finish. That's been a good, pretty good game. So known for cheering on their <laughs> younger teammates. And other gender when they go to the girls game. Yep, and then they do they do cheer on the girls, the girls game. Get very vocal. So 4.4 .4 to go. Rochester needs to continue that tight defense they play. They played really good defense thus far. That's why they're out in front. Right. 
So we'll see what Coach Kelly draws up for his defense as Coach Long using every moment of that timeout. So he believes in this group. So let's see what they go here. Caden Large goes to inbound. 4.4 to go. Got Lane under the basket. Javen May, Pitney, and Workman, the five out there for the Trojans. Four seconds. Not a lot of time, but enough time. Oh. Feeding to Riker, throws away. Workman trying to get there. Workman's got it. Workman, but they're going to get a jump, jump ball, ball call, and that'll do it as the Zebras are going to win here, 42 to 40. Trying a chance. <laughs> well, they're going to call a timeout. I don't know. Point four. I well, maybe I, I, I got like, to get it in. All they got to do is get it in. Triton still has a, a chance, but the, it, I, if you're a betting guy, I don't know if you want to. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know what you what they do there. I mean, but but give these Trojans a lot of props. You know, they got down. They had they got down there in the second quarter. They couldn't quite get back on yep. top in third. Then Wayne Riker just took over the fourth quarter there putting up 11 of his 15 points there in that fourth quarter. You know, he this group battled back hard. You know, fouls were kind of a big issue there in that second quarter. But give these Trojans yeah. some props. They have fought hard here tonight. But Rochester, even more props. This is a group that, you know, the lead, they got down they again, but they got rattled yeah. right back. Yeah, got, got down there, and they just kept changed their focus a little bit and got it right in and got the lead. And then it's just been a battle back and forth. And that's kind of what you want to see from your young, your two young, your junior varsity, uh, mental toughness when things get tough. How do you respond? And both these groups have responded well here in the second half. Yeah, I see what uh, he wanted to get these guys away from underneath that basket. So if there was a fumble on a. In, and Dante Workman, Workman ran over. Yeah. He tried to get a foul called. And that'll do it. The Zebras win 42-40. As Riker leads the team with 15 points. Yep. Pitney added 11. Yep, so we did get the stats there synced up since we didn't have much there. So Triton just two of six on the free throws tonight. Rochester, uh, after their first good six maids, then uh, ended up with nine of 15, two point. 13 to 30, 9 to 22, behind the arc 4 of 15 and 5 of 17, and turnovers unofficially 12 to 10. For Rochester Zebras, Campbell led their way with 16. Hook, Prouder, Bogger each with five, and Malco, Bowers, Fervida with three, and Samsel with two. For the Trojans, Riker, 15 points, Pitney with 11, Bryles with eight, and Workman with Six. So we'll take a break as the varsity team gets ready to get things underway here. We'll take a break. We'll be back right here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network.
It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bob Lovell. This is our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. And, Paul, we are in championship mode as we speak uh, regional round for girls basketball swimming diving wrestling um this is a busy busy time for everyone and an exciting time for everybody involved it is it is uh you know just met with the staff this morning coach and you know we're just they're, they're sitting there and they're tweaking this and tweaking that and solving you know <laughs> right uh little problems along the way you know you know you think about it, it's a, it's a pretty big undertaking that that you march 407 schools through four levels of the tournament to get them to the the crescendo when they can celebrate a state championship so there's a lot of excitement here you know i uh you know, it's, it's, it's a good time of year to be in Indiana and celebrate student-athletes. Well, it really is. And, and I also think, and I, we've talked about this, I think, before, but uh, I remember many, many years ago when I was in high school, you wouldn't ha- you didn't have girls regionals, sectionals. You didn't have girls championships. And this time of year and the 50th anniversary of Title IX, sometimes we lose sight of all the things that were done and all the people who did great things and laid the foundation for these young ladies in this generation to be able to have the opportunities they have. Yeah, and that's exactly right. You know, we uh, did an interview with a, a, a younger athlete here recently, and, you know, the, the message that that younger athlete was, and they were, they were uh, rightly so, a little not as versed in Title IX. But then I got to thinking about that. Isn't that a wonderful thing that we have a girl that grew up in participation that just participated and didn't have to worry about not having access to sport like uh, people did years ago. And, you know, we can always get better, and we always will. But, uh, you know, the fact that 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 student athlete was able to participate in a world and in a country like ours and and really didn't – feel the effects of, the, of uh, not being able to participate like the, her uh, predecessors did years ago. We're talking with the commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Nighting. And Paul, we mentioned, sir, you're embarking, as you uh, noted, wrestling, swimming, regional uh, basketball for girls. All of these uh, are held at some of the greatest venues in the country. And we've talked about this multiple times. But it's an added bonus if you're a student athlete in the state of Indiana, when you get to the championship level of your sport, you're going to be competing in world-class facilities that world-class athletes have used. And uh, I think that uh, another reason why the IHSA stands out in its uh, championship opportunities for men, for boys and girls. Yeah, you know, Bob, we're so fortunate. And I've said this all along, and I'll always say this. We're fortunate to be in Indiana. It's just a, it's an yep. incredible place to live, to grow up, and to celebrate. You know, we've we've not been called the amateur sports capital of the world for um, no reason. And, you know, as I walk into the notorium on Saturday or Friday night and watch student-athletes um, – participate on the campus of IUPUI and I look up on that wall and I see those great Olympians that have walked through that building and they're mm-hmm. winning mm-hmm. Olympic gold you know uh, incredible facility incredible place to show states their skills and then we simply jump right out of that then we go to game bids field house the home of the Pacers and the fever and we're going to we're going to pack that 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 field house from the floor to the ceiling with people that want to be fans of wrestling and it's an incredible event and you know we're going to do that on friday and saturday next week and you know again it's we get to do it our kids get to do it in first class world class venues so have you uh, arranged for the weather to be better this week than it was last week or we're counting on you to to make that happen for us Coach, I always put a call in to old Mother Nature. I, I put my request in early. And, you know, sometimes that uh, I've been lucky with that request. I get what I ask for. And other times, you know, other things take priority. And, you know, so those kids wanted a snow day and they wanted to go sledding down a hill. So that took priority last weekend. But we figured out a way to get through it all. Thanks for listening to the co-
becoming a licensed sports official is a great way to make a positive difference in the community and support the over 160,000 Indiana student athletes that participate across 22 IHSAA sports. Sports officiating allows you to stay connected to the game, become a role model for our young student athletes, earn extra money, and support the patrons and communities of our IHSAA member schools. To learn more about becoming a licensed IHSAA official, log on to IHSAA.org slash officials today. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. Good. All right, welcome everyone to another edition of Triton Trojans Basketball. I'm Andrew Hare alongside Anna McIntyre, Kenny Barnhart, and the Hall of Fame, Earl Ryland. They're here for the Triton Trojans Sports Network. As the Trojans welcome in the Rochester receivers into the Trojan Trench here tonight in this Tuesday night matchup, Rochester comes in with a 9-8 and record on the season with five of those wins coming against 1A teams this season. They're a physical team that is averaging 51 points per game on offense, allowing 52 points per game on defense as Rob Malco in his fifth season as head coach at Rochester is looking for his fourth consecutive win here tonight against the Trojan and his 11th overall. 
against Triton. Triton is getting their groove back as getting their groove back on this two game winning streak as they fa- as they found out here as they kind of as they starting to kind of get things found figured out here in the last few games. They're starting to believe in what the team aspect of what they can do, which is a testament to coach Gross and his coaching staff and the work they have put in during this marathon of a season. The family that is a group of Trojan seniors, time is running out as they look to continue that momentum as they prepare for their final leg of the regular season play, regular season and then the sectional play. Anna, since you finally got over here to put your headset on. <laughs> so this group here, we saw them play against a Tough Laville game, a Tough Laville team. You know, they they played a tough game against Trinity the other night. What If you're these guys here tonight, it's a very physical Rochester team. What kind of things are you looking to do here tonight? Take those charges, I think, is going to be important because, you, like you said, they are physical. And watching that JV game, they're not afraid to get in there. Um, and I think working as a team is going to be crucial for our boys because they're finally figuring out that if they work as a team, they can do so much better than they can alone. Um, and I think keeping their tight defense, but yet again, being prepared to take those charges. And this is a group we saw play. I mean, you know, that that, that LaVille game, that was, a, that was a tough ball game. I don't mm-hmm. care anybody. That was, I mean, that was a tough – the Ville don't like their record fully. I mean, that was a tough. That was a tough group, and you know the Trojans had to play hard in that game. You know, they, they did get out in front. They had some great moments in there, but La Ville they they had kept, they kept their foot on the gas and drove the rest of the way through. But I think tonight they got to play like they have against Trinity and how they have against La Ville a couple nights ago. And they got to remember how they played against teams that other tough teams they played this season. They've got to kind of harness that and bring it and start to kind of put it all together because you're in your final push here before sectional play. Yep. And for Rochester, a tough team. If you're Rochester, what kind of things are you looking to take away from Triton here tonight? Um, taking away those three-point shooters and really getting out like Ashton and Tyson, they can shoot from anywhere on the court, and I think closing them out and contesting them is going to be important. And I think keeping an eye on uh, Cole Shively is another one who's kind of mm-hmm. certain. You know, Cole's had himself a good season. He's a guy who's extremely tough. He can score from anywhere on the floor as well, but yet Cole's that guy, that kind of that – more physical guy that's not afraid to kind of go to the basket and draw some contact. I think the Trojans, they get the free throw line. you got to be make the most of your free throw opportunities here tonight. Yep, and we really didn't perform like on our three on our free throws like we should have during the LaVille game. And I think that free throws are going to be important tonight. Like you said, they're physical, so they're going to foul um, if we let them. So making the most out of those free throws. You know, and Malco and his group there, you know, this is this is a tough group. They shoot 73% from the free throw line. I mean, you know, you look at their 9-8 and eight record. They played some tough teams where they've lost in those games. Now, the one thing that is different between these two teams is Triton did beat Logan Sport, whereas Logan Sport did end up beating the Zebras 57-53 in overtime, where Triton handled them 42-31 in their early goings of the season. So there's a couple kind of ways you kind of see these two teams kind of phase out. Triton is favored here tonight at home. And if you if you if you're down there near these two teams, what kind of things do you expect to see as far as how the game you think is going to play out here tonight? You know, I really don't know, but I like because I haven't seen them play. Well, no, um, I'm, I'm just going to kick in and say yeah. that you know we did not get to play Rochester last year, and that was right. and with all the COVID stuff, you thought that that was the issue, but actually it was a weather related, yep. and, and being late enough in the season, just could not get another date to get get that game rescheduled. So, uh, so going two years to actually seeing. You know, and that was a very tight battle, you know, back in uh, February 18th, 2020, 39, Rochester did win out here 39-38. I so, think we're going to see another tight game just like we just did with the JV. Yeah. And that's exactly right. So with that being said, back up next, a battle between two teams to keep their winning streaks alive. Who leaves with the win? Find out next right here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network.
varsity basketball. At this time, if you're not standing, please rise. Face the flag, gentlemen. Kind of remove your hats. As we will honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Starters out there for both teams. Hannah, who we got for Rochester? For Rochester, we have Hunter Campbell, number two, and number four. Sorry, it's number three. Oh, number three, Brock Bowers, number four, Tarek McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Yeah. Number 11, Tanner Reinhardt, number 12, Luke Hunting, and number 24, Paul Leisure. And for the Trojans, we have number five, Cole McKinney, number 10, Ashton Oviedo, number 20, Cole Shively, number 22, Bruce Johnson, 24, Tyson Yates. And hunting elevates, and the Zebras will control the tip as McLaughlin will work up top. Here comes that trap of the Trojans. Goes over to Reinerts. Natalie Leisure on the left wing. He's their team's leading scorer, averaging over double digits a game. Leisure now on the left side. As they kick it back out from Hunting. Hunting goes down there, and McKinney got a piece of it, and Shively comes away, and the Trojans forcing a turnover here on their first defensive possession. 
As they'll get ready for on their chance on offense here tonight. Shively up top. Johns on the right wing down to Yates. Oviedo trying to get freed up. Yates will drive. Goes up off the glass. Not there. Tipped around. And Rochester controls. Rebound. Cole McKinney rips it away. Yates now in the corner. Goes the jab step. Works back left. Dials a three-pointer from the wing. Not there. No good. Tipped around. Rochester's minor. Reinerts gets the rebound. Leisure now. Stops. Near side three-pointer on the way from McLaughlin off the mark. And hits the top of the backboard. And an empty trip for the Zebras. You know, that first defensive, but defensive possession, that trap is something that Coach Groves has really worked with those boys on, and I think they do it well. Yates and Leisure, both team, both players wearing 24 up the floor now. Shiva in the left wing, goes to McKinney up top. Now to Oviedo. Oviedo stops, tries to spin back around, finds Shiva on the baseline. Yates cuts to the basket with the left hand, draws the foul, and he'll go to the line for two. Malco. Looks like that foul's going to be on number 11, Tanner Reinhardt. That's his first, team's first. Yates out of the line for two. As a team. This year about 65% from the line. It's leisure now at the floor. Gloth up top, patient. Browning wants it there in the high post. There you go to McLaughlin in the corner. Now to Reinerts and calls for Shiley will stick to him. Trying to feed it to, Bra to Bowers. Ooh, and Cole. knocked away. Cole Shiley got hand right in the passing lane. Cole Shiley's made a lot of really good plays here in the last few games. Him and Dante. The blocks. Major calls for in the corner. He'll drive, kicks out to Reiner. He'll drive now, the big man. Oviedo reaches out and takes it away. Oviedo up the floor, but here comes McLaughlin, but not enough as Oviedo gets that one to go, and the Trojans take a four-point lead. Leisure up top the key, drives. Oviedo trying to knock it away. And we got a foul call. This hunting was trying to keep possession. That foul's on number 22, Bruce Johnson. That's his first, team's first. And a 30-second timeout for Rochester as the JV didn't use their timeouts for Rochester until later on. So about a minute or two to go left in the last of the game. So, but yeah, until, until the last little bit, and then it was the Wayne Reichert show in the yep, that fourth, fourth quarter. quarter. The missile was just I was not here decimating everybody in oh, his path, putting really? up 11 that, points in that, in that fourth quarter alone, 15 a, on the way. That was a good JV game. As it came down to the wire, 42-40 to 40 was the final. Rochester won that game. As Caden Graham will now check in and take his spot on the floor. I wasn't out here for the fourth quarter or the third quarter. Huh. I was out here for like three minutes left of the fourth. Hey. Rookie excuses. You didn't tell me we were calling the JV game. I should have known when I saw your headset on when I walked in to come over here. I don't just wear it just to wear it. Oviedo knocks that one away. Up to Yates. But a good play by McLaughlin knocks it away, and it'll stay right here with the Trojans. And Aaron Huffman will check in. So Huffman checks in. Eights up to Bruce Johnson. Not Oviedo. Oviedo in the corner, stepping back to three. Short of the mark, couldn't quite catch the rim. And Huffman there to get the rebound. McLaughlin up the floor. Nice dribble drive up in the basket. Strong up there was hunting. But the three-pointer from Reinhardt's off the mark. Yates there to get the rebound. Yates up the floor. Reinhardt's disrupting him. And Yates is trying to run it down. But it goes out of bounds. And the, and the Zebras get it back. Don't 
talking about running the whole entire floor. That's all we've seen yeah. here in this first quarter. You said it was going to be an aggressive game, or physical, you said. And this Rochester team, it's a physical group. They're hungry for the ball. Reiner's down the corner. Often directing traffic. Back to hunting on the baseline. Goes up strong and draws the foul. And he'll go to the line for two. Fouls on number 22, Bruce Johnson. That's his second, team second. So hunting to the line, their first trip to the night. There tonight. The JV started off the game six of six. And the varsity starts off the same way. So Bazo checks in. And West Haver checks in for the Trojans. As Johnson will have to sit with those two fouls. It's a big hit for the Trojans early on. As hunting goes again, perfect on the first shot. Patient puts that one up and in. Full court pressure defense now by the Zebras. And they're now on the board. Both teams getting their first points to drop coming from the free throw line here tonight. Adam McKinney. Into Caden Graham on the baseline. Graham back to Oviedo. Driving against Bazo, not there. Retreats back, trying to lose him to Yates in the corner. Yates will drive. Yates strong to the basket. Banks open for Tyson Yates. I think when Tyson gets going, there's no stopping him. It's He's like a freight train. You over. A freight train, that's a new one. Actually, it's an old one. That's actually <laughs> an old one. <laughs> what have I missed? A, a lot. lot. <laughs> Leisure with the jumper, up and in with the contested look with Oviedo in the hand in his face. Now to McKinney. Goes to Graham in the corner. Graham now working outside the three-point line, goes to Oviedo. Back to Graham, catch and shoot three on the way. Puts it in. And Caden Graham, that line drive three-pointer, drills it there. Now hunting in the corner. Back to Leisure, three-pointer to answer back, and does. Averaging about 15 points a game. He's perfect. Hit, bolt, hit a two-pointer and that three-pointer. It's about 37% from beyond the arc on the season, according to Max Preps. McKinney there is. Baza almost got a hand on that one. And McKinney will go up and he'll draw the foul. Foul's on number 32. Robert Bazo, his first, team second. Just make sure, make sure you're going to pronounce that right. You've got to help these rookies along, Kenny. Mm -hmm. You know, they they, yep. they, they got to learn how to do all this. We all had, well, we were all there once. Yep, and poor Kenny and Ryan kind of got thrusted into it when I was gone. Speaking of which, four years ago today, Danny got to ring the bell as she finished her oh. radiation treatments. Yeah, four I don't years believe ago that's today. Been four, four years. years ago today. That's crazy. So McKinney now goes with that one up and in. So Connor Large will check in. As well, number 54 is Xavier Vance. Also checking in, number 34, Ethan Medina. Do you hear Cole? He goes, let's go, coach. Woo! Gotta love Cole McKinney. No, oh, he's funny. So Leisure drives and a travel call as he couldn't stop his momentum in time. So that's the biggest thing with Rochester right now. I've got them up to five turnovers. The Trojans with just one. Out of West here on the right wing. On top to Graham. Graham goes to Yates on the near side. Now to Shively, top to key. Shively will drive. Up strong with it. Cole Shively and one opportunity. As he closed like a freight train through the lane there. You're so mean to me, Andy. Well, I got the green light from some people in some high places to be able to do that. <laughs> Guess so. So Oviedo will check in here before the end one opportunity. Oh, 
Shively gets that one to go. I imagine you probably got permission from the same fellow that likes the uh, QR code. Maybe so. There's a QR code? Oh, yeah, we got a QR code. For, for what? At the start, for uh, you can scan that for your roster. And we don't have it bouncing around like they did on the, for the Super Bowl commercial. And, and the website doesn't lock up. Three-pointer on the way from the corner for Medina off the mark. And Oviedo gets the rebound. Up to Westaver. Quickly down to Graham. Graham will have to battle hard and up and in as he got some space there from Xavier Vance. The two 6'5 guys battling down low on that one. Huffman with it. Nice job by Rochester to break the defense. Three-pointer for Bazo on the way. Drills it from the left side. Six-point ball game inside. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Oviedo goes to Shively on the left wing. Shively crosses over, steps back, keeps his dribble. Now goes to Westover inside the arc. He'll drive, spin move for Westover, fades away off the glass and good for Chandler Westover. These are up the floor. Graham sticking tight to him. In the corner, Bazo again gets that one to go. Back-to-back -back threes for Bazo. On top to Connor Lards. Now to Shively here on the near side. On top to Graham. <laughs> Three-pointer. Drills it. Wow. For Caden Graham. That was a deep three. Yeah, he's eight points now, leading all scores. Trojans putting up over 20 points here in this first quarter. To Medina in the corner. Leisure for Leisure, top to key. Leisure drives. Back to Medina in the corner. So they work on that far side. Cross court Medina. Now to Leisure. He sees a three point opportunity. He can't get that one to go. Vance elevates, but Caden Graham's there to take it away. On the rebound. And Oviedo receiving the upcoming play up the floor now, slowly. 20 seconds to go. Now to Connor Large. In the corner, Oviedo for three pointer on the way. Can't get that one to go. Connor Large tips it. That'll bring back in McLaughlin and Bowers. So 5.8. Caden Graham's going to guard McLaughlin up the floor. West, they're trying to head him off. McLaughlin with a head of steam, coast to coast, and puts it in at the buzzer. And wow. 21-15 as we head in to the second quarter. I told you it was going to be a physical, fast-paced game. You weren't kidding. Maybe we just need to have you over for family night when I watch film with the boys at home. <laughs> that sounds scary. What? Jackson watches it. Yeah. Does he understand it? Yes. Every word of it. He's two. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, it's, see, it, it, it's, it's like that thing they used to do like when kids are babies and parents will play like classical music like Mozart and all that different kind of stuff. Jackson watches film. <laughs> He has got to know what's going on. I'm telling you, I got a monster coming. You do. <laughs> he's mean. It's not mean. He just knows how to push your buttons. Oh, no, he's mean. He so. is straight up mean. Ask his mom. He, he took out his mom earlier this week. Oh, no. Speaking of Trojans shoot five of six two pointers, two of five behind the arc. Rochester just two of three inside the arc and three of seven. But. One thing, Trojans five for free throws, haven't missed, and Rochester two free throws and haven't missed. So both teams shooting well from the free throw line, so that's going to be important. Mm -hmm. But for the Trojans, got to keep your foot on the gas here. This Rochester team's a team that was down in the first quarter, 9-7, to seven, and put up 16 points in the JV game to win that second quarter. This group here, they get stronger as the game goes along. The Trojans have got to match it. Nate's now here on the left side. On top to Oviedo. He'll work right. Feeding Caden Graham at the free throw line. Back to Yates. In the corner now to Shively. Three-pointer for Cole Shively off the mark. Caden Graham tracks down the rebound. Graham drives. Euro step up and 
there, so they'll get a foul, and he'll go to the line for two. Now, you won't know who this is, but when he shoots a three-pointer, he kind of reminds me of Lade Divas shooting a three-pointer. You don't even know who that is. Do you even know who that is? No. No. Seriously. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm, in, you know, I'm not even going to ask Orion. It sounds like a name you made up. <laughs> it is not a name I made up. He played center for the Kings back in the late 90s. He also played center for the Kings in the early 90s. Thank you very much. And he played for the Hornets. Andy. Don't mess with me. You guys act like I make up a name. No, I did not. <laughs> I didn't say that. He was a big guy. He can shoot those line drive shots like Caden kind of does. He was a right-handed guy. He wasn't left-handed. So Caden gets, gets both those free throws. Not happy with us. Oh, boy. McLaughlin drives top the key. Now kicks it on over. Reiner's with it. Goes back to Leisure. Leisure drives. Pull up jumper in the lane. Up and in. Nice move there by Leisure to pull up and jump, pull up and shoot that. We've seen him do that before. Up to Oviedo. He gets trapped in the corner. Oh. Throwing away. Cole Ooh. McKinney's there to bail him out. Now to Graham in the corner. Hunting's going to stick with him. Oviedo dials a three-pointer. Contested. I up Ooh. off the rim. Couldn't get it to drop. McLaughlin comes away with the rebound. McLaughlin drives. Now to Reiner, skip pass in the corner here to Bazo, who's hit two before. Can't get the third one to go. McLaughlin with the offensive board. Back to Bazo. Drives. Caden Graham reaches in and knocks it away. I just got a word, Andy. You're not making it up. My grandma says she remembers him. Thank you. Yates up, no good. Shively tries to crowd, keeps it alive. Now to Graham on the left wing. Back to Shively. Three-pointer on the way. Can't get that one to go. Rebound goes to Leisure. Told you I wasn't making the name up. Leisure now up the floor. McLaughlin transition three. Can't get that one to go. Rebound goes to Cole McKinney. It's a legal state of six for the Trojans. Now to Oviedo in the corner. Now to Yates. Oviedo goes to the corner. High pass up to Graham who corrals it. Now to Yates, now to Shively in the corner. Back to McKinney. McKinney finds Graham alone on the far side. Three-pointer on the way off the iron. No good. Cole Shively with the offensive board. And an end-one opportunity coming on the putback for Cole Shively. That foul's on number 32, Robert Bozzo. That's his second, team's fifth. So Xavier Vance will check in. Bowers also out there at leisure. McLaughlin, Hunting, and John and Vance. McKinney, Large, Shively, Oviedo, and Yates, the five there for the Trojans. The Trojans missed. That's their first free throw miss. And then that three-pointer by Caden Graham was his first miss. It's Vance with a put back, no good. Tipped around, Shively gets the rebound. Shively drives. I think we're going to get a charge call coming on the Trojans. Foul's on number 20, Cole Shively. That's his first, team's third. Am I not loud enough, Andy? I guess not. It's more your voice than the technology. <laughs> yeah, that is true. We got a double it, dribble. It's all you. It's not the. It's not the equipment. So you can't blame technical difficulties on that rook. I never said I did. <laughs> uh, I didn't say you did. I was just explaining. Okay. But we appreciate the feedback from the viewer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yates down past the half court line goes to Shiva on the left side. Hands off to Yates. Now to McKinney. Nice backdoor cut, reverse lay in. Oh. Cole Shiley couldn't finish. Had a beautiful look. Drawn up well. Jumper on the way and good there for Bowers. Yates now up the floor. Now to McKinney. Shiley on the left wing. Skip pass to Connor Large in the corner. Yates on the baseline, back to Large. Goes to Oviedo, now to Shively. Back to Oviedo. Now to Yates on the right wing. 
Strong offensive set here for the Trojans. Yates caught in the paint, goes up strong with it, too high. And that one to go tipped around. And Xavier Vance with the rebound. McLaughlin the other way. Crossing over. Drives. Puts on the brakes. Back to Vance. Tries to go to Hunting, but couldn't quite corral it. Halfway point here in the second quarter. Now to Large in the corner. Oh, like Connor Large looked like he was stepping on the baseline. McKinney up and in, but it looked like Connor Large might have got away with it from this angle. Yeah, looked like he stepped out. That's what I thought. He was pretty close to that edge down there. McLaughlin drives, feeds it down to Vance. Big man up and in. Up to Oviedo on the right wing. To Shiloh here on the near side. Now to Oviedo. Goes to McKinney. McKinney fades away and puts it in. Cole McKinney back-to-back -back baskets for him as he pushes that lead day with 3.19 to go in the second quarter. Leads up the floor. Knocked away, Tyson Yates takes off. Yates, cruise control, up and in. Glothen up the floor. Glothen, quiet, nice feed down to Vance with, through the contact. He'll get an and one opportunity. The big man rumbling through. That was on number five, Cole McKinney, sorry. Oh, you're fine. The 6'5 freshman on that one. He's a freshman? Yeah. Now, Jackson's watching. That's how big I want you when you're a freshman in high school. That's I'll take a senior even. Biggest thing with him, they've fed the ball a couple times now and got his um, momentum going. The, the Trojan's going to have to step in there and kind of block him out a little bit. Big man's free throw up and in. Rochester, a very good free throw shooting team. They've showed that off here in this first half. Leads down to seven in this high scoring first half. Now to Graham. Graham with the deep two. Can't get the roll. West, they're trying to tip it. We'll get a foul on the rebound on the Trojans. Foul's on number four. Chandler Westerford. It's his first team spin. You know, if Jocelyn keeps talking loud back there, we yeah, might we might real. have to put a headset on her. She's loud. Louder than me. You're going to have to put a headset on her, Andy. We don't need to. You we, we, you, we have to turn up. Here you go. You want my microphone? Oviedo takes it away on the far side, up the floor. Up to Yates. A Yates up and in. Can't Ooh. get the roll. He doesn't miss very many of those. No. no. Not very often. Leaves your back up the floor. His biggest thing is I noticed he goes on that left side, but he uses his right hand to flip it around. Oh. oh. And as Bowers attempted that three-pointer, he gets fouled by the Trojans. Fouls on number four, Chandler Westover. That's his second, team sixth. Looks like Shorey's got some pretty big fans up there. Coach Shorey. Yeah. He got fat heads in his head. Well, hey. <laughs> First one connects for Bowers. He's got two more. Bruce Johnson looks to check in with those two fouls. I would say those are life-size heads, not fat heads. <laughs> You don't remember fat heads? Around? Fat heads are big. Those yeah. are big. Those, those, are those, okay. those, those aren't. Those aren't. Those aren't like the cardboard that... cutouts of his face. There you go. Small ones. Small <laughs> ones. Man, Kenny, you're just coming at me tonight. Shot on the way and goes for Brock Bowers. Perfect so four point ball game. He's perfect at the line, keeping Rochester six to six. Oviedo back to Yates. Down to Johnson. Bruce Johnson off the bench. Can't get that one to go. Vance gets the rebound. Up the floor to McLaughlin. Doesn't have the numbers. Puts on the rakes. In the corner to Hunting. Back to McLaughlin. He'll drive. Down to Vance. Knocked away by Yates. Johnson fights for it. Finds Oviedo. Oviedo up to Caden Graham. Graham backing yeah. down. They're going to charge call. On 
on number 12, Caden Graham. That's his first team seventh. This should be in the bonus. Yes. That was an offensive foul. Yeah. Oh, right. And Cole Shively will check in. It's near the final minute and a half here of the second quarter. Triton leads by four. Leisure. Goes to McLaughlin, he'll drive. Pull up jumper from the deep, from the short corner, off the mark. Shively gets the rebound. Back to Yates. Now to Johnson. Oviedo for three. Can't get that one to go. McLaughlin with the rebound. Shively will kick it. I saw Emma Hepler in the building, so that's only yep, fitting. Yep, that would be about right. And there's the blown up car bar cutouts of Coach Shorey. <laughs> they should have got the whole coaching staff. Got the whole coaching staff? No, I that's should have. Oh. Yeah, that's what they should have got, the whole coaching staff when they made them up. Well, they got four up there. I guess you could add. There you go, yeah. exactly. McLaughlin top of the key. Goes to Bowers. Down to Vance, up, no good. Cole Shiley with the big rebound. And 40 seconds to go here in the second quarter. As Trent looks to things slow down for hold for that final shot to run a set. No shot clocks to so take all the time you need. And I notice in our, under our connection a little bit issue for our clock, so. Yep. It's not running it's as smooth as it could be. Well, it runs pretty good until it gets under a minute, and it's been a little flaky tonight. Ten seconds now to Yates. He'll drive. They're going to get a jump, jump ball. ball, and Rochester gets it back, and Coach Rose in disbelief. And they'll quickly send in Connor Large. So check in for Bruce Johnson. So 7.2 seconds. We saw the Zebras go the full court there at the end of the first. This time about two more seconds than what they had in the end of the first. McLaughlin was the man who ran the full court. Looks to do it again. McLaughlin down the floor. Feeds it down. Hunting up and can't get to finish. Oviedo, but Hunting at the buzzer and cuts the lead to two before halftime. I think they're going to come out of the locker room firing in this second half. This is a Rochester team. You cannot count out. This is a tough-nosed group, and they've proven that thus far. They've picked up on the shooters. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, you know, try by trying and forcing those turnovers, they got to mm -hmm. find a way to get those can, can you get those points off turnovers, something they're very good at. Right. So there's the dollar two-liter shots going here. Is, should be money for Isaiah Vaca. He shouldn't have to give any money. Yeah. The kid ought to be able to walk him with the whole case. Yeah, should be able to get him there. So Triton has shot seven of eight. Uh, Rochester still perfect, six of six. Thank two, you. Two points, nine of 16, and seven of 13. Three pointers, just two of 10 to drop for the Trojans, where Rochester got a third to three of nine. Big thing there, the turnovers, four to 11. But I want to say two, four of those turnovers, I believe, two of those four were um, offensive fouls. Offensive fouls, but out of those 10 turnovers, eight four steals by the Trojans. And then far as, oh, that's why I was like, can't get that to come up. So Leisure led Rochester with seven, Bozo with, Bozo with six, Bowers and Vance each with five, and Hunting got that last second shot with four. Caden Graham leading the Trojans with 10. McKinney and Yates each with five. Shivu with, or K McKinney and Yates each with six. Shivu with five. And then Westford and Oviedo each with two. So we'll take a break. Be back here after halftime right here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network. Hey, Dr. Jenner, what do you remember most about playing high school sports? Oh, I loved it. I made friends and have memories I'll treasure forever. But what mattered most were the life lessons I learned in the soccer field. Life lessons. Which are your favorite? Just being part of a team. You learn so many valuable skills. Collaboration, communication, work ethic. These are just some of the lessons that have helped shape the person I am to this day. I'm Dr. Katie Jenner, Indiana Secretary of Education. And I'm Paul Knight, Commissioner of the Indiana High School Athletic Association. 
Join us in celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX and the opportunities it's provided female student athletes across this country, including here in Indiana. Thanks to Title IX, generations of female student athletes have learned life lessons that will impact them for the rest of their lives. And that is a legacy worth celebrating. This is 50 years of Title IX. This is celebrating generations of female student athletes. This is your IHSAA. Hey, Carrie, you know how we like to say that high school sports are the purest form of amateur sports? Pure spirit, pure sport. That's Indiana High School Athletics. Well, I learned something the other day that further proves that. I'm interested. Tell me more, Chris. Well, we all know what amateur means, but do you know the root of its meaning? It means for the love of. Wow, you're right. That really does reinforce the idea that high school sports are the purest form of sport. Fans, I'm IHSA Assistant Commissioner Chris Kaufman. And I'm Assistant Commissioner Carrie Rosati. If you want to watch sports in their purest form, get a ticket and go support your high school sports teams. Everyone there, from the players and coaches to the fans and officials, they are there simply for the love of the game. Pure spirit. Pure sport. This is pure spirit. This is pure sport. This is your IHSAA. It's hard to believe that in 1972, fewer than 300,000 girls played high school sports in the US. It's true. Today, more than 3 million girls play high school sports, and it's all thanks to Title IX. When Title IX passed 50 years ago, it created a level playing field for women and girls in high school athletic programs. I'm Sandra Walter, a proud Brookville Greyhound. And I'm Carrie Rosati, a proud Ron Colley Royal. We're both assistant commissioners of the Indiana High School Athletic Association. We're also former athletic directors, so we understand the impact that high school sports have on the lives of teenage girls. And how Title IX has paved the way for generations of female student athletes across the country, including right here in Indiana. Playing high school sports opens doors for girls on the playing field and beyond. We're both living proof that when girls are given the chance to play, they're given the chance to thrive. This is empowerment. This is opportunity. This is your IHSAA. It's so good to have high school sports fans back in the stands this year, isn't it? I couldn't agree more. We've missed their cheers, their energy, their spirit, and their support. When you buy a ticket to high school athletic events, you're not only supporting your school's athletic department, you're also supporting your school's second classroom. That's because the court, the gym, and the pool are where student athletes learn valuable life lessons that will guide them the rest of their lives. From teamwork and time management to responsibility and respect, I'm Brian Lewis, a proud Jasper Wildcat. And I'm Robert Falkins, a South Bend LaSalle Lion. We're both assistant commissioners of the Indiana High School Athletic Association. We're also both educators, so we know firsthand that high school sports aren't just about winning and losing. They're about learning and growing, too. So, buy a ticket to your high school's athletic events and support the education of teens in your community. This is supporting your school. This is supporting your community. This is your IHSAA. Commissioner Neidig, can I have a quick word? Of course, Governor. What can I do for you? Well, I just want to say thank you. For what, sir? For your service. Well, Governor, you're welcome, and you know that I'm incredibly passionate about what we do at the IHSA. Oh, I do, and I share your passion. Without the IHSAA, we'd be without something incredibly important to our state's culture and to me, the Boys and Girls Basketball State Tournaments. Without Hoosier Hysteria, Indiana just wouldn't be Indiana, would it? You're absolutely right it wouldn't. And after all these years, I still can't seem to prepare myself for the excitement of the tournaments. Governor, the only way you could prepare for Hoosier Hysteria is by getting your ticket. Paul, you know I'll be the first in line. The Indiana Boys and Girls High School Basketball Tournaments are presented by the Indiana Pacers and Indiana Fever. This is your IHSAA. This is your state. This is your high school. This is your athletic association. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and we're here to make sure that all of this remains yours. This is your state. 
This is your community. This is your IHSAA. Oh, All right, yeah. welcome back, everyone. Andy here alongside Anna McIntyre, Kenny Barnhart, and the Hall of Fame. Ryan Lever here for the Triton Children's Sports Network. As we get ready to get this second half underway, Triton leads by two. They'll start with the basketball. And if this is, if you're this group, I think you got to keep your foot on the gas. Yeah, I don't. I know. I I'm pretty sure Rochester's going to come out. They had a great second quarter and, and like scoring that buzzer beater. And I think it's going to be a shift of momentum here, and they're going they're going to pull out and show out. And I think we need to keep our tight defense. And now let's go with the Trojans, 14 to 10. Shively gets the down low, draws the foul from Reinerts. As the two both will hit the floor. I believe Reinerts on the call. Yep. Foul's on number 11, Tanner Reinerts. That's his third, team's first. Shively off the front iron. Vance will check in, the big man. As Reiners will, Reiners will sit with those three fouls. <laughs> Don't ask. The cheerleader's back there behind the basket again. Oh. Paige. And gets that one to go. She got worn in the JV game. I think it's the rush discretion. Yep. Ask Trent. He will give you the <laughs> full description. John Glenn, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. Bowers with it goes back to McLaughlin. Straight away three. Can't get that one to go. Bruce Johnson with the rebound. Up to Yates. Yates has to pause. Draws the foul. Goes the line for two. Fouls on number four. Tarek McLaughlin. That's his first. Team second. And DeHaines, I don't always check Twitter every five seconds. I don't, apparently don't have it. I don't apparently don't have it. Notifications. I saw Chick Fil A was offered. I just said, "Oh, I've been all about that." Chick Fil A was what? Chick Fil A was offered. It's a pick me up for tonight. Oh. There's a Chick Fil A built in my mom's building at work. She's gotten it like three times since it's opened. It opened on Friday. Oh, so you're one Thursday. of them. Thursday. So it to we're gonna talk to your mom. She needs to bring us Chick Fil A. Yeah. She okay. Will. I kind of sure. figured so. 
So Yates got one of two, so Triton shoot nine of 12 free throw line. Bowers loses in the corner, Shiley took it away. Up the floor now, he'll take off, kick out. Tyson Yates, transition three on the way, puts it in from the corner. Yates up to 10 points. Him and Caden Graham. Oh, Vieto oh. takes away and swatted away from Leisure. Down to McLaughlin. Slowing down the offense. Goes to Bowers here on the near side corner. Skip pass one more time into Leisure in the corner. Off and up top. Off and patient. And a timeout for Rochester. Which Malco wants to see what he wants to do here. Yeah, I think he just surveyed the defense and see what adjustment that he needed. So full timeout for Rochester. This leaves Bob. them with three. This Bazo will check in. Why they take a quick timeout? So I figure out where I put it. I want to congratulate the 2022 Triton Athletic Hall of Fame inductees, Melissa Nifong Branham and Randy Hooley Jr., both athletes. Coach Gail Perry, contributors Bill and Marsha Kaiser. The inductees will be recognized at halftime of the Triton versus Knox home game on February 25th. The bank will be on February 26th at 6 p.m. at the Back 40 Banquet Center here in Bourbon. Tickets will be $25 per person and will include a meal. The last day for ticket sales will be February 19th. Once again, congratulations to our 2022 Triton Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. And I bought a special shirt for that night. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I am proudly going to wear it, too. <laughs> I heard that you guys got TTSN coats. And that's also going to wear. Oh, yes. Where is mine? Well, you see, you've got you to have tenure. <laughs> yeah. It's called showing up. <laughs> On time. Oh, the Hall of Famer with the singer. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, Michelle got me a shirt. Wear for it, er, basketball. Oh, Mr. Yarbrough told me you guys. He got you guys coats. I said, well, "Where's mine?" He goes, "You're a student." I said, "Thanks, Mr. Yarbrough." Just saying, we got tenure. Technically, Ryan does, Let's but see. Kenny and I are just kind of. We kind of got phased in there at some point. Baza loses it in the corner, and the zebras take back over. Twelfth turnover for the zebras. Brighton has nine of those 12 turnovers, or nine steals for those 12 turnovers. Now to Shiva in the left wing. Johnson, now to McKinney up top. Bruce Johnson. Now to on the right wing, now to Yates in the corner. Here comes the trap, finds McKinney. Tries to feed it down to Shively and does. Shively backing down up off the glass. Banks open for Cole Shively. Cole Shively Gets him up to eight points. Bowers with the top of the key. Goes to McLaughlin. In the corner to Leisure. Cross court. Down to Bazo. Baseline jumper on the way. Off the mark. No good. Johnson with the rebound. And Oviedo in the corner. Johnson to Shively. Now to Oviedo. So they work it around. McKinney patient in the corner. Oviedo dials three, dials a three off the mark. Shively with the rebound. Shively up. Can't get down. Johnson with the put back. Nice job by Bruce Johnson to stay home and follow the shot. And a good rebound by Cole Shively. Leaves in the corner, step back three on the way, too strong off the mark. Tipped around, knocked away, Tyson Yates takes it. Yates up the floor, Yates drives, goes up strong, can't finish a good defense by Leisure, goes out of bounds. And they're gonna say it went off, they're gonna say it went off of, well, hang on a minute, he says white. He said off white. And then, and then pointed he, that way. Anybody else here? There's no everybody, way it was off white. But well, I, 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 but he said off white, that's what he just said. Now. Uh, yeah, and then he, he says off white, and he points he's, this way. And then he pointed that way. And then, oh my! Oh, he said off white. I'm pretty sure he wasn't picking out colors for his kitchen. Yeah. 
And Coach Groves gets a yeah. warning. Warning, and he hadn't even said anything. Yeah, and he should be able to get an explanation. And Coach Groves trying to get an explanation. The official finally explains. Bowers now goes to leisure at the free throw line, kicks out to McLaughlin. McLaughlin drives to Hunting. Feeds the corner. Bazo for three. Drills it from the corner. He's leading uh, Zebras with nine. Johnson on the far side corner. Shively quickly to Yates. Yates back to Bruce Johnson for three. Can't get that one to go. Said fell hard on the rim as McLaughlin brings it up the floor. Trying to keep track of Bazo as he's hit those corner threes, and there's another one on the way off the mark. Johnson with the rebound. Johnson looking down the floor, waits, goes to Oviedo. Oviedo drives back to Johnson, in the corner. Yates for three. Can't get that one to go, and can't get there in time as Cole Shiley is. Bowers takes it away off the rebound. McLaughlin to Bazo in the corner. Tipped away by Bruce Johnson. Bruce Johnson up the floor. Johnson patient, adjusts, and puts it in. Still in the basket, Bruce Johnson. And the Trojans put their lead up to 10. Some of these bench dance, whatever, dances you want to call them? They're called, ce it's called celebrations. Yeah, they're funny. They're good. They're funny. And Huffman will check in, and so will Caden Graham. And Connor Large will also check in. Yates up the floor. Trapped in, now trapped in the corner. Up to Graham. And a timeout for Coach Groves. He saw trouble. And uses his first timeout. Yep. I thought he used one in the first half. Uh, no, I don't think they. Yeah, he did. He called a 30 second timeout. I don't keep track of time oh, I don't either. I just, I, was, I just thought, I thought he called one in the first half. Huh. Anna's starting to wear off on me. <laughs> no, I thought he did. I didn't, I didn't say you were wrong. I'm just saying the. Hey, uh, Mr. sicker has been known to get it wrong down there. Yep. When we've <laughs> caught it, we've had to yell down. So. Well, you know, this. Those guys have a lot to do down there. I, I don't want to touch all those buttons. Kick, However, kick cords and kick cords and yank out the <laughs> communication cable up here to us. That's happened. It's happened right <laughs> it's now. Happened right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Got it. So Yates now goes to Oviedo. See what Groves drew up. Back to it now to Connor Large in the high post. Feeds it down to Caden Graham. Goes baseline. Graham goes up strong, and he'll get fouled. Fouls on number 23. Aaron Huffman. That's his first, team's third. There's so only one senior on this Rochester team. Evan Elliott, the lone senior. A lot of juniors. They're going to have a big senior class next year. And Caden Graham connects. He's been on fire just like Donna Dreyfus. 12 points. Four for four from the free throw. Two for two from three behind like the arc. Who? And one of two inside the arc. Hunting now on the baseline. Driving against Graham. Knocked away by Bruce Johnson. Connor Lars now standing up the floor. And McLaughlin knocks it away. It'll stay right here with the Trojans. Yes, we did get the word that there is a fire down at Louis Dreyfus. And I figure some of the Rochester fans would want to know that. Yep, yep. Got to keep in track. That could be big. It can be. And most time it's just a little nothing. That's from my neck of the woods. And Oviet on the right wing. In the corner now to Graham. Finds Connor Large in the high post. Now to Yates. Yates will drive. Pull up jumper from the baseline. Puts it in. Tyson Yates. Gets him to 12. He's fanning the flames too with 
Caden Graham. Bowers now, he'll go. Finds Huffman on the high post. Pulls up jumper from the lane off the mark, no good. And Graham and Johnson find each other for the rebound. And a jump ball call on the Zebras. Got a good play there by Bowers to get in there and get his hand on the ball. As Graham and Johnson tied up on the rebound. Reinerts will check in with those three fouls. They'll check in for hunting. Chandler Westover also checking in. Bazo going to rotate in. We got a hockey substitution going here. One more. What's one more, guys? I hear yep. one more. And their coach looking down the bench. <laughs> I think we're good. Legion out of inbound. Back to Bowers. This is from, from McLaughlin. Bazo now in the corner. Back to Bowers. On to Reinerts in the corner. Good ball move by the Zebras. Bazo, three-pointer from the corner. Off the mark, no good. Reiners is going to hang with the tipped rebound, and he'll come away with it. Bowers drives the free throw line, retreats back, goes to McLaughlin. McLaughlin crossing it over. Behind the back, now to Leisure. He'll take off. Loses it, and we're going to foul call on the Trojans. Fouls on number Bowers. 36, Bowers. Connor Leisure. Large. That's his first, team's first. Speaking of hockey, Andy, I'm going to a hockey game on the 25th, which means I'll have to leave you again. I could get out of it, though, if I really wanted to. Right. I don't know. We might have a Hall of Fame inductee up here that night. I'm going to have to ask a question. McLaughlin in the corner. Bowers for three. Can't get that one to go. Reiner tips it, goes back over the Caden Graham blocks it. And a foul call underneath. And Malco not happy with the call. Tanner Reinerts, that's his fourth, team's fourth. Rochester Faithful not sure about that one. So minute 16 to go here in the third quarter. Now it goes to Westover, back to Yates. Back to Westover. Back and forth to go on the perimeter, skipping it back and forth. Oviedo now in the corner. He'll take a baseline, pull up jumper on the baseline, on, gets the roll for Ashton Oviedo. Just his fourth point. These are them. Still going the corner to Bazo. Bowers finds Reiner for three. Too strong, Connor Large couldn't quite corral it. Leisure to inbound. To Reinerts, back to Leisure. He drives, pull up turn, knocked away from Oviedo. Here comes Tyson Yates. Yates behind the back, pretty move, Tyson Yates. Oh my goodness. Look at the excitement from the Trojans. That was. Shades of Scotty Pippen on that drive. Woo. McLaughlin on top of the key. Now to Bowers, back to McLaughlin. That was pretty. Oh, uh -huh. my goodness. And Five I, seconds. And I missed it because I was clicking. McLaughlin fadeaway jumper at the buzzer. Off the mark. And that'll do it for the third quarter. Trojans lead 50-32. to 32. And they had a, Trojans had a big quarter there. Outscored Zebras 19-3. to three. So They've had themselves two big third quarters back-to-back. -back. In the game against LaVille, they put up 25 in that third quarter. 19 put up here today, according to Kenny, as he'll look, throw up the schedule, I believe is what he's doing. Yep, we can get our fun JP varsity schedule. So I said uh, we're finishing up this game tonight. Um, Argus is scheduled for Thursday night. Got a feeling weather could throw a wrench into that. So let's have to play it by ear on what happens on that one. And then on Friday, be down at Tippy Valley. And then next Tuesday. That, that's a little bit. I think we start at 6.15 on that Yeah, one. that's kind of a off valley start. So game's a little yeah, late. Yeah, off time. So just watch. Uh, make sure you ring the bell there on the YouTube so you get notified when we do go live. And I said next Tuesday we'll be up at Bremen, and then we'll finish out the season here back here on next Friday with Knox. 
So as we get ready to get things underway for this fourth quarter, I think if you're Rochester, just keep trying to chip away at that lead because, you know, 18 points. They still, have the, they still have a chance. I think if you're Triton, you got to keep Bazo in check still as much as you can because if he gets on fire here in the fourth quarter, we'll be in trouble. Yeah. Yep. Keep an eye on Rochester, and they're not out of it yet. 18 points. Yeah, it's a steep hill to climb. We saw this group put up some good points in that first half. Triton's got to keep their foot on the gas pedal. So Oviedo now crossing it back over. Now to Johnson. To Shively in the corner. Down to McKinney. McKinney drives. Fade away jumper in the paint. Puts it in. Cole McKinney is a strike first coming out here in the fourth quarter. Reiner's down the corner. Bowers for three straight away. Can't quite catch the rim. Bazo tries to get there to knock it back into play. Can't quite do that as Hunting will check in for the Zebras. As well, as Medina will also check in for Rochester. Medina. Medina. Are you sure it's not Medina? That's what Bob, Donna said Medina. Okay. So my apologies there on the mispronunciation. Assembly Hall picture. Oh, I figured. Oh. And Shively can't quite finish there as he had a nice look to the basket. So that's just the fifth turnover for the Trojans. So. I won't be watching tonight, so. He's had a pretty good ticket, but not as good as the season tickets. And McLaughlin here on the near side. To leisure up top. Kick out, McLaughlin for three, in and out. Bazo with the rebound for the Zebras. Medina in the far side corner. Down to Hunting. Big man, fadeaway jumper, and they'll get a foul call. Just got a little bit of probably it was Palmer's wrist. Fouls on number 20, Cole Shively. That's his second, team second. So Hunting was to the line earlier, hit both of his attempts. Keeps it perfect at three. Coach goes calling out. We want to see falling this free throw. Hunting drills that one. Here comes some pressure from the Zebras. Yates patrols, goes to the corner. Back to McKinney. Now to Oviedo. Back to McKinney. McKinney in the corner now to Johnson. Down to Shively. McLaughlin saw it and knocks it out of bounds. Good defense by McLaughlin to get there to knock it away. Out of Yates. Yates will drive in the paint, goes up strong off the glass, and he'll draw the foul. Fouls on number 12, Luke Hunting. That's his first, team's fifth. Eight's out the front iron, no good. Trojans shooting 11 of 15 at the free throw line. Rochester still perfect at eight. Eight's in and out, empty trip, but gets a tipped rebound from Shively. Oviedo step back for three on the way. Can't get that one to go. McLaughlin with the rebound. McLaughlin up the floor. Drives coast to coast, goes up and gets the roll. He gets down that court in like two seconds. He's, He's fast. fast. Oviedo will get a travel. Coming here as Connor Large will check in. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Caden Graham will check in. And so will Bowers for the Zebras. And Baza will take a break. Leisure with it, top the key. Because of Medina here on the near side. 
Back door's closed. Johnson now comes out to guard. Bowers who tries in some contact. He'll go to inbound. Fouls on number 22 versus Johnson. That's his third. Team's third. Only the team's third foul here of the second half. Yeah, they've been pretty good there. Just six turnovers. Now to Bowers on the far side. Bowers will drive. Goes to Leisure here on the near side. Wing. McLaughlin drives. Hop step. Nowhere to go. Finds Bowers. Nice move by Bowers, but knocked away from Cole McKinney. And a foul call on the rebound. Foul's going to be on number 12, Luke Hunting. That's his second, team six. It's now directing traffic. Goes to McKinney in the high post. Johnson cuts underneath, puts on the brakes, goes up off the glass, no good, gets his own rebound, kick out to Graham, three-pointer. Can't get that one. Hunting, boxing out Cole Shively, a foul on the rebound. Foul's on number 20, Cole Shively. That's his third. Yep, third foul. Team's fourth. So Haynes wants to know about how many points Tyson's off from a thousand, but if, what do we figure? We had to have an average 19, 19 points yeah, a game. Still like that. Uh -huh. McLaughlin top the key drives, loses it. We're gonna get a foul call on the Trojans. No, oh, a travel! The way they whistled, how slow it was developing? Like what? Yeah, I thought they was gonna have McKinney with the foul for reaching in. Five minutes to go here. 52-36 is our score. Andy O'Hare alongside Anna McIntyre, Kenny Barnhart, and the Hall of Fame of Ryan Lindner here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network. So Kenny keeps that foot planted, now finds Johnson on the far side. Goes to Graham in the corner. On the left wing's Oviedo. Works the screen right. Tries to feed it down to McKinney, but let it too far in front of him, and Triton turns it over. Before tonight, Yates was at 881. So, a little bit to go. Leisure your pull-up jumper from the free throw line, in and out. Yates with the rebound. Yates up to Johnson, down to Oviedo, blocked by McLaughlin, and they're going to call a foul. That's his second? Yep. Team seventh. So Groves and Malco talking back and forth, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're both going, um, okay. <laughs> laughing at each other. Yeah. Hey, at least they're laughing and not arguing. And Coach Malco, these two coaches have faced off numerous times. So Ashton just one or two at the line. Leads on the left wing. It's Bowers McLaughlin in the corner. Medina for three. The lefty puts it in from the corner. That gets him on the board. Three points. And a four point or four person change out for Rochester. Oviedo now to Johnson. Now to Graham in the corner. Oviedo tries to get freed up to up top. Oviedo trying to spin his way out of trouble, finds Cole McKinney. McKinney drives, feeds it down to Johnson underneath. Johnson goes up, draws the foul, and he'll go to the line for two. Fouls on number three, Brock Bowers. That's his first, team's eighth. And a complete player swap on the floor coming here following that made free throw for the Zebras. Four players check in. Evan Elliott, number 20, the lone senior, will check in. Xavier Vance will check in. Number 15, Dylan Hook will check in. And on the far side there, Owen Prater, number five, will also check in. 
Johnson's second free throw off the mark as Connor Lars checked in. Put back by Graham's no good. Vance with the rebound. And well, Chandler Westover snuck in there. I was overwhelmed by the group of Zebras that checked in. Vance in the corner knocked away. Elliott gets in the corner. Not a hook. Medina with it. In the corner to Prater. Prater goes and a charge drawn by Chandler Westhaver. Fouls on number five, Owen Prater, his first team's ninth. McKinney now with it inside the arc in the high post, drives. Puts on the brakes, feeds it slowly to Johnson, who can't quite finish at the rim. Rebound, goes to Hook. Hooked out the floor. Working top the key, goes to Prater. To Medina here on the left side wing. Vance goes through, goes to the ground, but a travel call. The call will be here from the near side official as Evan Bryles and Dante Workman will now check in. If Anna would have been here, I was broadcasting that game earlier. Yeah. I was here. <laughs> but you weren't here. I was here. I was here for the whole JV game. Maybe in the same location, but not over here where you okay. should have been. I was in the facility. Mm -hmm. Guess we'll just have to take your word for it. You didn't see me? I was sitting right over there. We was calling a game. I was calling a game. I was working. That's true. Out of Graham on the left side to Bryles. Now to West Haver. Back to Bryles, pass a little too far in front, and Triton turns it over. Next time I'll zoom in on her, and you can give the play-by-play -play of what she's doing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> good, good idea. Good Please idea. Please don't ever do that. Oh, it's going to happen now. <laughs> Same reason I won't do that three-point shootout thing at halftime. Why? Because Ryan will zoom in, I'll miss, and he'll play it over and over and over and over and over again. I was born yesterday. Well, Look up. Did you see what I got to record last night? Coach I Kroll, yeah. <laughs> repping the fifth grade game. Uh oh. <laughs> that was funny. She said, this better not be recorded. And I said, better yet, it's going to be live. <laughs> <laughs> Medina for three. <laughs> Graham gets the rebound. Bryles streaking up the floor with a big man. P patient but knocked away. Good effort there from Medina to knock it away. No, the only critique I have of her refing is she needs to blow the whistle with a little more authority. It was a little weak. She blew it in her classroom with great authority. Well. That's <laughs> different. Well, she's trying to make sure you guys were awake. Maybe I she, wasn't even in her class. It was during passing period. Just there. making sure you were still awake. I guess so. Jacob Pitney now will check in. <laughs> Caden Graham will come off the floor. Yeah, he's going to finish up the night with 12 points. But I want to say this Rochester team, you know, granted tonight didn't quite go their way. Triton. The kind pieces of, are there. But the pieces are there. And, and, in their, and in their respective sectional, 8 and 10, 9 and 8, 8 and 9, 3 and 15, 8 and 9, and 8 and 9 are the records in their, in their sectional. So that's a pretty even sectional. This group could very well win their sectional. Malco still got a good piece. There's a lot of juniors. This is going to be a good team next year with all those seniors. Shot on the way is good for Elliott. What was our prediction? That's what I was just thinking. It's close. 58-44 was the prediction. It's not, yeah. We're right there. Has he ever been 100% right? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. He's gotten yeah. right numerous the times. The girls gym town game this year. Yep. Dead on. He's got it dead on a few other times. Elliot again. Puts it in. <laughs> now to Pitney. To Workman up top the key. Back to Pitney in the corner. Now to Westover. Now to Connor Large. To Workman in the corner. Connor Large for three. 
Dante Workman somehow corrals the loose ball. Now to Wester, back to large. To Workman. So Triton's going to improve to 14-5 and five on the season. Uh, and a blocking foul on the Zebras. Fouls on number 20, Evan Elliott. That's his first, team's 10th. So Triton will improve to 14-5 and five on the year. It'll bring the series within nine. Rochester holds the all-time series currently before this game's over with 33-23. The last meeting, Rochester won by one back in 2020. Did not play last year, as Kenny noted earlier. I remember that Rochester game. It was uh, a, that tight scoring, and it was a drag defensive battle. Did we call that one from your couch? No. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we did on that one. Why have we not done that yet? We don't year? need to. We don't need to. We're allowed to go to places. Oh, well, I guess that's true. It's a technical nightmare when it doesn't work. And that'll do it as the Trojans will win here, 55-43. As Kenny will push the stats. I'll see if somebody's willing to do an interview tonight. If not, we'll just get Coach Groves. Clean up a few things. Are you going to ask questions or are you leaving? I don't know. Well, if you're not, I need to know. I'll probably just leave. Okay. Okay. All right, there we got it. For Triton, 14-24 free throw line, 8-8 eight of eight for Rochester. 16-29 compared to 10-22 on the two-point area. And three-pointers, just 3-17. Three where Rochester got five to 21 and turnovers, we had eight to 17. Not sure what happened there. We may not have, there we go. Sabazo so led to Rochester with nine, Leisure with seven, Hunting with six, Bowers with, and Vance each with five, McLaughlin and Elliott with four, Medina with three. For the Trojans, Yates with 14, Graham with 12, McKinney and Shively each with eight, Oviedo and Johnson each with five, and Westifer with two, and Workman with one. So like I said, Andy's going to try to line up an uh, interview here, so just stay tuned, and we'll be right back.
All right, welcome back. We've got Coach Groves here. Coach, what a win here for the guys here tonight. Yeah, you know, I told him before the game, we haven't beaten these guys in a while. I think we went on a big streak, like, from 2010 to 2017, won, like, seven mm -hmm. in a row, and then I think they've won the last five in a row. Yep. So, you know, nice to beat, beat these guys. These guys are, are a good basketball team. You saw in the first half, you know, they're way more aggressive right now offensively. They're hard to guard offensively. Um, you know, and I was proud of our kids' effort. I thought we, we did a nice job to start the game. They, you know, came out the second half. Nice job to start the second half. Did what we needed to do to win. And you saw, like, you talk about that second half, 19 points coming on that third quarter, only holding Rochester to three points. That was a big for these guys. You talk about a defense that uh, stole the ball 13 times and forcing 19 turnovers. That was a good night for the guys yeah. defensively. Yeah, well, the first half, we had to go to the, the – Box and one on leisure because we couldn't guard them in first half. So it, you know, I don't know if the defense was good the whole game because that, <laughs> that for they were, they were splitting us and we we were having a hard time guarding them. So at halftime, you know, I thought that would at least take away their aggressiveness off penetration. I was worried about them hit knocking down some shots because they can shoot the ball, but luckily their guys you know weren't really dropping them in for them. So, but you know, it's something too that we haven't worked on in a long time. Give our guys credit because they came out and executed that and, and did a nice job in that. And your offense tonight, you know, the guys had some moments where they were where things kind of. Kind of went a little wonky there for a little bit, but they did find a way to kind of get the ball moving well and work together as one team out there on the floor tonight. Yeah, you know, we only had eight turnovers. You know, that's a good thing. I thought we had some looks at free throw line. If we, we make free throws, I mean, we were, what, 14 for 24 yeah, from the yeah. line, something like that. So, you know, that wasn't too good. And I thought we had some open looks that we just didn't hit. You know, we knocked down our shots, knocked down our free throws. You know, we, we score a lot more points tonight. And that, that's one thing. You know, I feel like, like you said, we are working the ball a little bit more. We're moving. We're knowing, understanding what – what's going on on the court you know they switched up their defense quite a bit too they had they went two three they want a trap they want a man scramble trap they played man to man so they they were kind of mixing it up and keeping off us off balance too i thought our kids not, did a nice job recognizing that and just playing through it and those guys like you said you know in, in, in a jv game where we, we kind of kind of anticipate this is going to be a this was going to be a tight game after watching the jv game and you know some of the calls didn't quite go the guys' way there for a little bit they did a good job by keeping their head in the game and keeping their composure to continue to play hard yeah you know i told them i'll, I'll I'll get on the refs, which I, I kind of did tonight, <laughs> and you guys just play. So, um, yeah, it, it was, you know, that that's something you as a player you can't control. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you, that's something you don't have any control over. And I always tell the kids control the controllables, and you know, you guys do what you do, and I'll I'll worry about the refs, and you guys keep playing basketball. You know, for the most part, you know, they didn't get frustrated. They just kept playing, and that's that's what they need to do. And you saw like the guys, you know, Grant. There were some size down there for. Uh, Rochester at times down there where Cole McKinney had to play hard. But for me, Bruce Johnson with those two fouls went out early, but he played really well. Him and Cole Shiva did down the post as well here tonight. Yeah, you, yeah. Cole McKinney I thought probably played really well. He, you know, he was able to knock in that little five foot jumper. Yep. Um, you know, he was kind of feeling it down there in the five, <laughs> five foot range. And so, but that, you know, that, that's what we need. We need him yeah. to knock down, you know, eight to ten points a game like that. And he did a nice job. He did well defensively. You know, Cole's kind of a guy that you know gets overlooked at times he does so yes. many good things so many nice things for us on both ends of the ball he distributes the ball well he he, he understands the game he, so you know he, he doesn't get a lot of credit at times but I, I thought you know he's he's one guy that kind of you know is maybe one of the glue guys on our team that you know oh, just absolutely keep, keeps us where we need to be so um you know nice to see that and yeah and i like again cole shively you know he was he was feeling a little under other under the weather tonight so yep. he was kind of having trouble breathing, so we were kind of getting him in and out. and you know, So his minutes weren't quite where they needed to be. You could see, he, you know, when he'd come in and be extended play, he would get get winded a little bit. And so, um, but, you know, he, even, he did a nice job battling through that and still fighting. And, you know, I, I know I just think he struggled early and then kind of got his confidence back and was attacking hard and finishing. We've been really working on finishing drills inside and getting Cole and Cole and, you know, everybody really finishing inside. And they, I thought they did a nice job doing that tonight. Absolutely. So then you get ready, like you said, now tough rest of the week. You got two really tough games on Thursday and Friday. I mean, quick nap here tonight. It's going to be all it's going to be back to work as usual on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a rough week, you know, it's, and so, it, but it's going to simulate. We were talking, you know, this is going to be like sectional. You know, you, most teams are going to play Wednesday night because we have seven teams in our sectional now. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. So this kind of simulates that. We got Tuesday, um, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. So it's you know one day off, play two more games. So this is going to be a good prep for the sectional, and you're going to have to beat teams like Argus and Valley to get a sectional championship so um it's a good 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 week for us really i mean it's, it's, it's a tough week but it's it's going to be good for us in the long run all right well coach well thanks for the interview we'll hang it up here for tonight as triton wins in this one i'm andrew here for anna mcintyre coach groves kenny barnhart in the hall of Emerald ryan limler until next time remember the trojan way